YouTube, it's Brian Phillips coming to you with a new plane. Look at this beauty. It's gonna be awesome. The EC1500 from Horizon Hobby. It's big, it's powerful. It's got awesome counter rotating props. It's got a Bombay whatever door to unload things out of. We'll show you in the air. That's gonna be awesome. And uh, big old flaps, I have mine configured with the inboard most and then the next middle one as flaps. Oh yeah, buddy. And all sorts of setup stuff. Following the Maiden, you can watch the unboxing, the build. I modified mine a little bit for an EC, uh, for from the EC5 connector because I use XT60 connectors. We're gonna be flying it on a 5,000 milliamp 3S, turn G, heavy duty, 60C pack that's been used and abused by yours truly. When we're done with that, we're probably gonna jump into 4S, 4,000, or we'll do a parallel connection between two 3,300 Zippy compacts in a 40C configuration, just to show you how it handles the weight. Real quick, the CG, <clears throat> I have one small bit of payload in here. You can see my marks, can you? Mm, where? They're right there. Oh, yep, they're there. So basically, I'm just gonna double check the CG. I'm normally not a big, big worry wart when it comes to CG stuff, especially on Horizon Plains. But you'll notice we're right in the middle of the CG, even with the payload. <clears throat> Without further ado, here we go. Look at that torque want to rip the wings off. I love it. <laughs> We're just going to taxi out. I turned my rudder up to 150%, did some straightening on all the control surfaces last night. <clears throat> Basically, we ran out of time on the setup. Pretty easy setup, but just filming takes forever. Oh, that is so gorgeous. I'm at about like 10% throttle right now. Pretty decent turning radius. Let's see if I can make the turn. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, it gets up and out, no problems. Thing's got power. It's wanting to roll really bad. Okay, I'm gonna try to get that worked out. Not used to having roll issues on a Horizon product. Look at that. And yaw issues on trim. This is on 3S, folks. Man, the rudder is way out of alignment. Yeah, out of the throttle, right through the sun, sorry, camera crew and me. Oh, man. Feels very loose. Full landing flaps. Out of the throttle. Full power there. Really nasty tendency to roll right now. Almost like an asymmetry from a thrust issue. Okay, full landing flaps here. I want to see how it slows down. Doesn't look like those props are stopping, does it? Mmm. Kind of interesting. Okay, full landing flaps here. About 15% throttle there. Let's see if we can track her the props. Okay, I'm going to go get it here real quick. Okay. Cuts on. So my initial thoughts are, um, handling is kind of crazy. And look at the trimming, guys. This is, this is where the controls are to try to keep it going straight. And it's just not going straight. And you see the rudder? Show them the rudder. That's crazy, guys. Flaps are off right now. Now they're on. Just really not liking the, the way it's flying right now. So I'm gonna kick up my Expo a little bit. 
I'm gonna go to the top setting. We'll see how it behaves. It gets up in the air okay. It just feels super honky, like super wonky. Okay, safe is on now. Let's see how safe does it. Look at it climbing now. What the heck is it thinking about? It's like the CG's not right, but it is right. Full landing flaps here. At a, we're out of safe, if you didn't already know. Watch your runway there, camera crew. Yep, I'm off. Very much, very, very doggy right now on 3S. Riding the rudder something fierce to keep it going straight. I'm gonna just go overhead here. It's not crazy windy, is it? No, it's not, not it's like okay. not at all. Okay, full landing flaps. I'm at my five minute warning. Using that rudder. Overshoot again on purpose. Okay. Yeah. So basically, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to switch out to a 4S and we'll see what type of performance we get. Because on 3S, I can tell you right now, it just doesn't feel like it has enough power. So we're going to try that right now and we'll come right back. Yeah. Okay. So we're going uh, 4S, 4,000 milliamp hour, um, 60 through 120C discharge. These packs, this pack is in particular is, is pretty old. I love the straps in this plane. I'm gonna probably put this a little bit more nose heavy this time, just because I feel like maybe that's part of my problem is I may, maybe just a little bit on the tail heavy side here. Okay, so we already uh, checked the batteries out last night, made sure that everything was solid. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let things initiate. Well, that was interesting. I saw the dance, but it only looked like one of the props was spinning. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do too, let's look at our expo for a second. Try to get that in the in the shade there. So dual rates and expo. Right now we were flying at last at the top setting. So I'm gonna go to ailerons first. I'm gonna kick this up. I'm just gonna go like crazy with it. Um I'm gonna set this to like 40 actually, my middle setting, my top setting, I'm gonna go like even higher. Elevator. We'll go to 50 on that too. And then in our middle setting, we'll go to 30. And then rudder, we'll go to the top setting. Whoops. We'll set that up to 50. And we'll set this one to 35. It seemed pretty touchy. Okay, and then we'll leave the low setting. Okay, so throttle cut is, is on right now. I'm just wondering if maybe, I mean, the flaps were effective. If you're going with the wind, it just gets carried with the wind, which is surprising. And it's flying really heavy. So I wanna test the CG again before we take back off. One thing too about this plane you'll find out is the props are really close to like the middle, it makes it hard with a five bladed prop to do this. So you better be careful when you're picking it up that you don't get your hands in there and then accidentally shut your throttle cut off or something. So I'm just gonna find that spot. I also noticed that where I have my marks made, there's like a void for some sort of, I don't know, it's like a servo access. And so it makes it extremely difficult to check the CG because it's right in your way. So I'm actually gonna go a little bit more nose heavy. I also added this here, cause I hate having to put my fingers on both sides. I know you're crushing the foam every time you do that. I'm actually just gonna slip my pack forward. Then look where the servo is, guys. This is one thing I've run into problem with. I know that there's ways around it, but look where the servo is. You, you pretty much have to have asymmetry in the load because the way the packs all are gonna go. Now you do a huge pack in here, you're not gonna need to have it forward so far. But this is still a relatively small pack for this, this operation here. 
So we're gonna test again. I'm just verifying my points here. Yeah, we're gonna be a lot more nose heavy this time. It should help a lot with the uh, with the wonky behavior and then the 4S should help, but this pack might not be great. So we'll see how it performs. So throttle cuts off. I have a five minute flight timer. Uh, we were at 3.85 volts on the cells on that 3S after five minutes of not full flight time. So I'm gonna go for takeoff laps and take off here. You ready? Yep. 4S is way better. Look at the roll to the other direction now. What the heck? Out of the flaps. That looks good. Yeah. Got ups now. Up. Oh, there's my warning. I'm gonna probably be on the safe side and switch out packs here, but I don't wanna waste everybody's time, so we'll just take a landing and then we'll do that real quick. Look how much I'm fighting it, guys. Major asymmetry here. And I'm overflowing off the runway, which is really not a big deal. It's just, you know, I wasn't expecting to be doing that. Okay, we're gonna go a little bit longer on this pack. That's about 50% throttle. Working the rudder. Okay, there we go. Man, look how wonky it is, guys. See, it's got power, it's just... And I hate that my pack is causing this. Look at the wings, a lot of flex. I think I have asymmetry in my, in my ESCs. I think that's what I'm fighting so much. Man, that does look good. Take off flaps. A little bit too much down elevator correction right now. Flaps are effective. Look how much slower it is, guys. Up against the tree line there. Looks awesome. Love the color scheme. Cannot believe the amount of Expo I'm having to fly this thing with. Makes me feel like a baby pilot. Full landing flaps there. Let's see how much it slows down. There we go, man. That thing's slowing down quite a bit. I hit that tree. <laughs> good ground, good ground authority though, I must say. Um that's a long That's a long rollout. rollout. Let's see how it does for takeoff here. Oh, that's not good. Alright, pausing it. Okay guys, so we didn't break a prop or anything. That was probably not the most wise decision I've ever made. Throttle cut is on, by the way. Again, you're gonna have to manage your throttle cut. Look yeah. on the ground where it hit. That's nice, right there. Must have dug into the, the grass or the mud a little bit. <laughs> Look at the way it pulls off like that. I'm just constantly on top of it to keep it going straight and level. <laughs> that was pretty cool. No, I don't know if I got it. You didn't get it? I don't know. <laughs> I saw it. Should have warned the camera crew. Sorry, camera crew. Okay. It sinks pretty quick. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to think of this. I was expecting so much. Stop rolling! <laughs> it 
It's really wide on the driveway there, at least. Let's taxi back up. I would say this thing basically needs 4S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because without 4S, I mean, you're talking about like basically trying to fly scale. You need a long runway. I feel like we have a pretty need long, a long runway, runway anyway. Yeah. It flies heavy. I didn't expect it to fly heavy at all. And I don't know if you guys saw. Let's show them the back while we're down on the ground. I ran the... Uh, I put a timer on that on the way down, and then I had to go fast on the way up. Had to play with my end stops on both the top and the bottom of the range to get that to work. Sure looks cool. Mm -hmm. Man, it just... For 400 bucks, I was expecting it to fly really good. And I feel like I need to play with it some more to really figure out what I'm doing wrong. It did help a little bit having the power and it did help a little bit having that battery up toward the nose. I think what we might do is we might pause it and go ahead and throw two 3300s in there that are better batteries. And we'll see if we can get this thing to balance out maybe a little bit more on the nose heavy side. I bet we're gonna get better flight performance out of it even though it's gonna fly heavier. I mean, I don't know how you get around that. So we'll come right back when we got it set up. Okay, so we're gonna do two 3300 milliamp uh, Zippy Compact 40 seat packs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this parallel adapter that I made. I've, I've shown how to make these on one of my videos. They're super easy to make. And if you don't know the difference between parallel and series, you probably are not getting into the hobby this much, but <clears throat> that's gonna basically add up the capacity of the two packs together and allow you to use essentially what is a 6600 3S, okay? If you were to put these in series, you would have a 6S pack, 3300 size. So one thing that's really nice about this plane is that the battery tray is gigantic. Oh, by the way, also I'm gonna do a voltage alarm on this, but I'm just gonna pick one pack and go with it. <clears throat> My hope is that I won't need to worry about the fact that there's two of them and one could be dying and the other one could be alive uh, because one of these packs will fly this plane, hypothetically speaking. So I'm going to go ahead and release this. These, 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 this is the best saving grace of this airplane right now is just being able to get the batteries in and out easy. Um, seems like a minor detail, guys, but I'll tell you what, a lot of these planes, it sucks to load batteries in, um, especially when you get into the more advanced ones I found. Uh, they're they're just increasingly difficult to get batteries in. you might also notice that my batteries today are really crappy um, Yes, I agree <laughs> So you'll notice that that throw will clear for the rudder And so we'll be good there. I could actually put another alarm on that if I wanted to but I just rather would save the weight on that Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to load the payload too um, This is the payload. It's just a parachute guy Which is fun so of course you have to open the, the tail. And so what I'll do is I'll actually set it up onto the back of the truck here. So I got some schmucks on the bottom of the plane already. That's unfortunate for my little crash landing slash takeoff thing. So I'm gonna take this guy and just wrap it up a little bit. I'm just gonna slip it in. That's a pretty big cavity. Have you showed them inside of there? Well, they'll see it later when You'll they see watch it in the, the, in the unboxing and yeah. the build series, but it's huge. Okay. So you could do all sorts of gear. You do have to kind of help it up a little bit. I noticed, which I'm not a big fan of, but what are you going to do? It's kind of a, a fun thing. I mean, this whole thing is a fun thing, <laughs> but I'll tell you what on 3S, it's a little bit scary. So we'll see how it goes. Power saves lives when you're talking about aircraft, everybody. Just make sure all the ground handling feels good. Just for the record, my aileron trim is all the way to the right, which is not cool. Okay, we have plenty to take off. Do you want to film from the other side for light reasons? Yeah. Okay. If that's okay with you. Yeah, I think we should. Okay. This plane, it feels pretty sturdy, but the wings 
sure feel like they're taking a beating. There we go. Okay, there's three ass. Pitch sensitivity is leaves a lot to be desired right now. It's flying heavy. Takeoff flaps are back on. Look at that pitch come down. That's all part of the show. Sure looks nice. Mm -hmm. Definitely more of a scale flyer on 3S, that's for sure. Getting a little rudder action in there to help balance out my trimming woes. Gotta let the like, gotta let the AS3X do its thing here. Boy, that looks really gorgeous. So when you have a roll to the left or to the right, guys, I know that some of you have dealt with this before. It's sometimes hard to tell whether it's from the rudder or if it's from the ailerons. In this case, wow, did you see the tail kick around there? That was cool. It's a bigger plane, that's for sure. About 30% throttle there. Full landing flaps there, just to give you an idea of how much he'll slow down going downhill. Carries a whole lot of mass, that's for sure. I mean, that's 6,600 milliamps of power there. You guys probably noticed I didn't go under the power lines today so far, mostly because the way the lighting is right now, it's very challenging to tell exactly where I am. But we'll do it for you now, because I know you guys are wanting to see that now. There you go, under the power lines. I really like the way it's flying now compared to what it had been. And yet it's still, it makes me think Hobby King. And even my camera crew knows what I mean when I say that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do. It is not a good thing. No. Out of the flaps. Did you see how it just pitched up on me there? Mm -hmm. That was not input for me. That was basically, um, I think I was finding a sweet spot where the center of gravity just shifted the mass back. Okay, let's do a drop here. Get out! <laughs> that was cool. Closing the door. Oh no, our poor parachuter guy. He didn't deploy, I guess he'll die. You can watch the parachuter for a second if you want. Oh, oh he's, he's on down. the ground. Yep. We're good. See, and the other thing too I'm mildly disappointed by is how fast you have to fly the thing. I think I have an asymmetry still on the power. That's why I'm having to correct it with the rudder. You can see it from forever away too though. Mm-hmm. So there's an opening in the trees there, guys. We're going through it. Now we're in the backyard. Just to give you an idea of how big it is. This is the size of the timber, but it just feels so much bigger, doesn't it? It does, yeah, a lot. I mean, it kind of is bigger in the sense of weight, and the sense of just the fuselage size when yeah. you get off the runway, hon. I mean, camera crew. <laughs> okay, full landing flaps here. Having to just be on it to control everything, guys. I wouldn't suggest that this flight is anything especially overwhelming. And what I can tell you is that it is taking a lot to fly it. And that's with Expo high. I'm going to kick the Expo up even higher yet. We're just going to see how it flies. This is almost 50% Expo on all axes. Take off flaps deployed. What do you think, camera crew? It looks cool, but it looks 
wonky kind of. Yeah, I know, I agree. When I buy a Horizon product, I expect nimble, I expect light, I yeah. expect, especially if it's not a scale looking aircraft. Right. I expect it to perform very, very good. And maybe that's unreasonable of me, but for 400 bucks. That's a lot of money. That's for a lot of money for a eight. halfway job, you know? Mm -hmm. It has some really cool features, no doubt about it. But if it doesn't fly well. <laughs> yeah, and I, how can I say this, guys? I'm not saying it flies bad because it doesn't fly bad. It just, it flies like a hobby king plane. Mm -hmm. And anybody who has done this for a while understands what I mean. I'm not trying to bash hobby king. It's just, you spend 200 bucks on a plane at hobby king for something like this. You don't spend 400 bucks on something like this. Um, so the disappointment level is, is, I would say on a scale of one to 10, the uh, happiness factor is a four, and the disappointment level is a seven. So, if I could go in a time machine and spend the money on the F-16, I would have done it in a heartbeat. Yes, it's a cool plane. Yeah, it's gonna be cool to be able to drop payloads and things like this, but would I buy this again? Right now, I'm gonna give you an absolutely not, uh, which you haven't got one of those for a long time from mm -hmm. me. Um, I'm really disappointed with this plane. So Horizon, I don't know what to tell you other than there's either something wrong with this one or there's something wrong with me, which is always a possibility. But I love all my Horizon planes, right? Mm -hmm. What Horizon plane have I not liked? The Habu UMX when I was learning well, to fly. Yeah. I didn't have a good experience with that. Every EDF UMX has been pretty much crap. But not because of the EDF, it's just because I wanted more from it than it was ever gonna perform. And uh, so I've been disappointed. A lot of you guys have also been disappointed the same way. But in that size class. But in that size class, 1.5 yeah. meters horizon, come on. I mean, you got it all disconnectable and tear downable and all those cool features. Given the right runway, right flight environment, I think you could maybe spread your legs a little bit, you know, or spread your wings a little bit more or whatever and do, do better in that way. Um, but I'm just not, I'm just not real thrilled with it right now. I wanted to be overwhelmed with excitement and thrilled with the quality of flight. And I, I was more happy with the quality of the build finish than I was with the flight. I'm gonna fly some more, we'll pause it. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna try to fly a little bit more before we finish off the unboxing and build. Uh, but at this point, Now that's on 3S guys, it's got some ups. But look at the thing wonking around on the rudder axis. Mm -hmm. Why is it wonking around? I'll tell you why. It's wonking around because there's asymmetry in my ESCs, I just about guarantee it. Boy, it does look sweet, doesn't it? I have 50% Expo right now to make it look scale. Right down the runway here. You see it wonking? Yeah. It's kicking the tail. <clears throat> I do not have any aileron to rudder mix for the record. Take off flaps there. I'm just gonna relax into a full landing flaps there deployed. See, and I wanted to time the flare and it sucked. I did a horrible job of it. There's a nice little tip stall nose over. And look at the wings bend, guys. 6,600 milliamps of battery in there. Okay, here we go, right down the runway. See guys, it's not about being able to do those tricks. It's about being able to do them with confidence. And this plane is heavy, it flies heavy. 
it looks pretty good. No retracts was a disappointment, but I wasn't really too off put because the retracts don't really do much for a plane like this. I feel like it gets away with not having retracts. Let's open the door just for cool effect. Closing the door. Okay. I'm going to try to do a barrel roll here. Except I don't feel comfortable. See, that's the problem, guys. I don't have the confidence to roll the airplane, for goodness sake. It's supposed to be 3D. Granted, I'm on 3S. I am trying to give it credit for that. So here we go. Okay, here we go. Am I hearing beeping? I'm not. You may not, though, with that lawnmower in the background. It's interesting. It seems like our neighbor always mows when we're flying. That's our other neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, the dead people neighbors? Mm -hmm. oh, They're yeah. always mowing. They're always mowing. They don't have anything else to do. Well, that's cool when you can see the shadow up there. Oh, that's a warning. Hey guys, coming in for a landing. Stay clear of the runway. Please. Yep. 30% throttle, trying to stick it for the people at home. Oh my God, this is <laughs> well, it's better than rolling off the other side because it's a hill to death. All right, guys. Next up, the build series. Oh, man. Talk about a bit of a disappointment this time. I don't know. Maybe I just saved you 400 bucks. If so, definitely hit like and subscribe <laughs> if you haven't already. And uh, I would say this plane, they put on the side of the box some experience required and i don't know i'm not as experienced as some of my followers and i'm not as experienced as a lot there's a lot better pilots than me but i wouldn't classify classify myself as a bad pilot and flying this thing i mean you're on it you have to be on it and uh, i was expecting a carbon z cub here i was expecting a carbon z t28 a great flying big plane and so uh, in that regard, I'm disappointed. I think we're gonna get some new batteries, some fresh batteries, meaning new as in brand new batteries. And we're gonna put it through the paces on some new packs. We'll see what type of flight times we get. We'll probably share that video. Maybe I will find something I did wrong. I really hope I did because I hate to give a bad review on this plane because really it is beautiful and I want it to be good, but it just isn't. All right, without further ado, enjoy the build and unboxing. YouTube, Ryan Phillips here. EC1500 by Horizon Hobby. Very neat plane, not sure how I feel about it yet. We're gonna do another flight for good measure. I just got done filming a bunch of maidens and uh, I did some minor adjustments. Notice that the rudder is lined up perfectly. And I wanna show you one other thing. Look at the ailerons. Flaps in the fully stowed position. Flat, 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 flat-ish, flat-ish, okay? Watch this, it rolls straight-ish, okay? <laughs> I had some major symmetry issues going on. We're gonna show you what this looks like, okay? When you take off, watch how the wings are. Take off flaps. It should lift level. If it doesn't lift level, you're in trouble. Okay, we're on 3S dual 3,000 milliamp packs, turn and G heavy duties, 40C packs. Out of the runway, please. Full landing flap. See, it's lifting level. That's important, guys. Open the door with delay. Close the door, goes quick, out of the flap. This is 3S, not 4. I added, a, I added a contrary aileron input to the rudder. Now my yaw is way flatter. You see how it's flat? 
That's important, guys. It's good for control. Okay. Going to try to dump our payload here. Get out of there. Okay, never mind. We're going to get out of that. Out of the throttle altogether. That's full speed pass going downhill on 3S. You have enough ups to fly upside down just fine, as you can see. But as usual, when you fly upside down, you gotta have enough juice to get flipped back over. Take off flaps here, deployed, coming over our shoulder. We're gonna go for a low pass, right into the driveway, okay? Under the power lines, past that beautiful house. Okay, full landing flaps deployed. Evidently there's a strike by our parachuters union here. Out of the flaps, out of the dump mechanism. Plane looks cool, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Woo! Got a lot of yaw authority with this plane. A lot. I've got it dialed in to where it's flying good, guys. <laughs> Finally got that little turd to come out. <laughs> Quite the cling on. Pretty cool. Did you miss it totally? No, I know. Awesome. Just let me you. That's when you know you have power, guys. That was not a fast pass, okay? Out of the flaps. I am at. 50% expo on each axis. Way more than I figure you need on a plane of any sort. To get a nice crisp roll like that, you really got to be on the rudder and the ailerons. Of course, you're riding the throttle, so you're all the way at the top of the stick if you're on 3S here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and flip her over for you. Show you. It'll do an inside loop probably on 3S. Oh, just barely. Stalls out at the top, coming down toward us. To the inside, gonna miss my no parking sign nemesis. It's actually not a no parking sign. It's not. What is that thing? Oh, it's, it's a stop, stop sign ahead. Let's just do the takeoff flaps. Let's do a nice scale pass. See if we can get a, a still look at that. Man, that is gorgeous. Full flat. I have cut down my elevator correction from like the recommended 16 and 28 or whatever it was to a new 5 and 8. Full landing flats here. Check this out. This is not safe, guys. Okay. So, wasn't gorgeous, but I'm trying to show you the sticks at the same time. So we're gonna flip around here. One thing I'm not crazy about is on the ground. I wanna be able to turn a little sharper than that. You can get this thing in the air quick. That was no flaps. Is that scary? Nope. Good. Mostly because you have an awesome pilot husband. Sure. Full throttle. Now, one other thing I did was I turned off my airplane. I put the throttle stick in the full position, meaning that I unplugged the LiPo, if that wasn't already clear. 
and then I plugged it back in, thus forcing both of the ESCs simultaneously into their programming mode, after which I forced them into the programming mode. Let's see safe. Here's safe. I'm forcing it into a turn. Here's safe with full flap deployment. That's what it should look like, okay? And a flare. Okay, out of safe. That's boring. I like the way it flies on 4S because you get to do more fun stuff. I like the way it flies on 3S with two 3000 packs. I feel like you've got a good balance of weight to power. And I must say, guys, most mechanical trimming I've ever done on a Horizon aircraft. That wing bends a lot, too. Even with that solid spar that's huge. Full landing flaps. Watch this. You can make a pretty sharp turn with the full landing flaps. And you'll notice it didn't crash into a million pieces, <laughs> which is always handy. I am at 100% throttle, in case you were wondering. If I was on 4S, 100% throttle probably have broken in half. Okay, full landing flaps. We'll just see if we can do a nice, beautiful landing. Using the rudder, cross controlling to slow it down, and then flare. Ooh, that was gorgeous, not at all. We're going to turn around. We're going to take off right at us. You good? Yep. Full flap. See that, guys? You can drag the nose on the ground. Did you see it, or was that just a figment of my imagination? I think... That is why, folks, I turned down the elevator mix. Full lining flaps. Push your nose down just a hair now that I've shut down that mix a little bit. That was a little bit better, but still it gets aggressive when it gets down to that that point where you're stalling. You're pretty much on those back, uh, back wheels on the mains. Here we go again. Out of the flaps. Straight and level, a little bit downhill. Full landing flaps. You can see the lights are effective. Nav lights are effective, even though they're kind of mounted on the side. You'll notice I dragged the uh, tail a little bit there. Just the nature of the shape of this plane. Now, call me crazy, camera crew, but is that thing favoring pretty bad to one side versus the other when it's taxiing? Mm. Okay, this is no flat takeoff. Look at that. That was no elevator was input good. until now. I'm just kicking it. Oh, I'm sorry. That was takeoff flaps only. My apologies, folks. Nice level scale looking takeoff. Okay, coming in for a no flap landing. Should roll out for like six months. <laughs> You gotta be careful, you can overwhelm this and you can force that tail into the ground. Okay, we're gonna do a no flap takeoff. Again, this is on uh, two 3S, 3,000 milliamp packs, turn a G heavy duty, 40C, 30 through 40C. Here we go, full throttle. No elevator input. Oh, gorgeous, that looks so awesome in scale, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I loved it. Kicking it into a tight radius turn. Look at that. Look at that, guys. 
It'll almost hammerhead on a four, or on a three S rather. And yes, these three S packs are in a little bit better shape than the 3300s for my initial video series. Very easy to hold your pitch when you've got your uh, Expo at 60 and rates at 90. In case you guys were wondering, that was a fairly close quarters maneuver. Careful with the jeweler, man. Yes, I do. Okay. You see the rudder, guys? Trying to cross control, but I just don't have enough to do both full. Just showing you the, the speed you can get power on is slower than many other prop-driven planes because of the five blades. A lot of drag on that prop. Looks awesome though. About hit the mailbox on one of my off-camera flights tonight. That was exciting. Good job. You're welcome. I didn't hit it though. That's good. Now, the reason I almost did is because my asymmetry in the ailerons was so severe. Okay. There's my BP. Hear it? Mm-hmm. 15% throttle. She does not like ground looping at all, which is nice. I just wish I could figure out a way to make the nose gear keep its alignment a little bit better. Ooh. Well, we need to get the parachute anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so guys, in closing, before the unboxing, I think this plane is, my disappointment factor has gone from a six and my excitement factor from a four. Now I would say it's the excitement factor is probably like a 5.5 or six, and my disappointment factor would be like a four or a five. Um, and you're probably thinking, well, what are you disappointed about it now? It's heavy, it flies heavy. It took a ton of work to get it flying good. Something that's not customary for Horizon Hobby products. I mean, really, even my wife knows this. Mm -hmm. So with all due respect, this Horizon product is not maybe the best. Would I buy it again? I don't know, it's always fun flying them the first time. But would I buy it again? Not for 400 bucks, I wouldn't. I would maybe buy this plane at a $300 price point or a $250 price point would be a good value. Then I feel like you'd be getting a good value because you got the lights, you got the flaps, uh, you got the dual power plants. But to be perfectly honest with you, is it worth 400 bucks? <laughs> Negatory, but it's still pretty cool. Thanks for watching guys. More coming on this video. Stick around. And if you haven't already spent an hour watching this, then... Stay longer. Stay longer. Thanks for watching. All right, folks. In my haste, I forgot to show you what I did with the batteries. On this configuration, the better configuration. <clears throat> 3,000 milliamp long skinny packs. They flank that rudder servo. And if you'll notice, we do not hit. Voltage alarm is tied in, wires tied up. This is a little parallel adapter. If a guy was motivated, or gal, one could set up two packs, one on left side, one on the right side, but I would not recommend that because then if you have one battery go bad, you're gonna have a horrific asymmetry because of the, uh, the uh, one prop versus the other not running. The other thing that would be sweet on this plane, and I mean totally sweet, is if somebody would do reversing ESCs and differential thrust and you could just about fly that thing backward so waiting for that to happen it's probably not going to be my cup of tea but somebody's going to do it and it's going to be awesome keep watching for more not awesome stuff coming right now YouTube it's been a long time and so we figured we would make a video to just show you our new awesome blinds <laughs> watch this watch this this is so cool oh yeah buddy Remote controlled shades. I'm wondering if that's maybe why they didn't come for this video. But let's show them anyway. Let's show yeah. them anyway. Okay. So we're gonna change the channel. And we're gonna, oh yeah, that is so cool. But wait, let's show them the chickens first. There's chickens, I promise. They're right there. Well, you know, oh, you can sort of see them. There's the chickens. 
Hold Guys, on. we this whole property has overtaken our entire lives. It's incredible. So we wanted to show you those two upgrades, and then <laughs> upgrades. We'll, show you, we'll show you one more thing here. Okay, so we got these blinds up here to help with filming, and they are awesome because they really help to control the light. What's this? What's this? Are you kidding me? How'd that get it here? Came in the mail? Except it didn't come in the mail. I bought this at Hobby Town. What, it, what could it possibly be? <gasps> oh, it's this thing. Okay, guys, that was a shameless plug for our blinds.com blinds. They did not sponsor this, although it would have been smart to do that. Yeah, if for we sure. Would have thought about it at the mm -hmm. time. And they are awesome, by the way. They are. Um, but you're here for this beautiful new thing. I got this at my local hobby shop. I hadn't bought this for like over a year. And oh, wow, that is gorgeous. It's not quite a C-130. That's how you hear Chani. Oh, it's my 4,000 milliamp 4S packs. I wonder why you need that. 120C. Well, sounds like this plane will fly on a, a huge variety of different lipos. I believe it'll do 3S or 4S. And they said some ridiculous amount. See, 3 or 4S compatible with brushless power systems. That's an S. And I know that this was not printed in China. It may have been made in China, but they printed this box somewhere in the US, I'm guessing. How big is this thing, you might ask? Well, Horizon has thought of that. See this? Look. It is exactly 1,527 millimeters wide. And it's 1,190 millimeters long. Look at all those panels, guys. That's because there's assignable flaps. Oh, look at that elevator. Rudder. Oh, this thing is going to be so cool. I can't wait to open it up. And we are going to do it right now! Clip to opening. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't use clips. So this has AS3X and safe, okay? So safe is auto leveling when you let go of the sticks, and then AS3X resists wind and different environmental impact. Oh, that's always convenient. Look at this. Give them a close up of that. <laughs> There's a spare screw. That's where I always put my spares. I always have my spares right there. So. Hopefully it's, not, it's a spare. It's still in confidence. And I'm not, there's no way I'm putting that on this island. Nope. I'm gonna lay it on top of the box right there because I'll remember that for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let's slip it right out. Do you oh. want me to? Oh man, uh-oh, screws. <laughs> oh. Screws. That ain't good. Look, one, two. I'm gonna just take those off the tape right now. The good news is, guys, the tape appears to have caught at least two of the screws. I'm gonna put those right here on the middle of this box. That box is huge, by the way. And um, you might have already checked the price point on this plane. And I'll tell you what, the only thing I don't like about this plane so far is how much it costs. Mm -hmm. It's a little pricey for what you're getting, so it better be awesome. Give me the yeah. Go ahead and pull the camera through. Ooh. Okay, Jeez. we got it. We've got enough. Hold on. Let's just see how big this box really is. It's okay. I can't fit in it, but my kids will fit in it. Yep, they'll love it. Okay, so first thoughts about packaging. It is in a box. Okay. It is in one piece. Oh yeah, baby, look at this. You can do Navy, Army, Marines, U.S. Air Force, safe, E-Flight, res uh, Rescue, Spectrum, Horizon, U.S. Coast Guard. I think I'm gonna be doing Coast Guard or Navy. I'm not sure, we'll figure something out. This is pretty cool. Oh, oh, screw! <laughs> look, right here, guys. Don't forget that screw. Tape. Um, so far, I got three of those long screws and one small screw. It makes me very nervous. I hate it when I see loose stuff. Okay, that's taped down. Carbon fiber spars looks like they are beefy and huge. Okay, 
Ooh, show them this, guys. Show them this. Look at this. Bulge. That does not bode well for the process of packaging my airplane. I'm guessing they didn't get it stuck in there quite straight. And if you don't stick it in straight, it doesn't go in all the way. These carbon fiber cars are huge. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Are they solid? Holy crap, Olas. That thing is solid. It isn't hollow, it's solid. Sheesh. So I'm gonna show you trying to break it. Just kidding, I'm not gonna try to break it. <laughs> I can break it if I really wanted to. Um, this one must be for the tail. Also, very solid. It's huge. All right, we're just gonna get this thing out as quick as possible so we can fly it as quick as possible. Uh oh, uh oh. What's going on here? Oh, okay. Holds the wing. I'm just gonna carefully unpack this. Oh, yes. Oh, that feels great. Wow! Awesome! Guys, look at this. Look at this motor in here, okay? And then look at that. Big old connector, big old connector, and then the servo connection points. You know what else is awesome about this? I don't have to add LEDs. You know why? Because there's already LEDs. Yeah, baby. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Up and down. <laughs> that is not nice to my servos. Okay, so let's let's bring down the operating light. Let's see if I can... Oh, I can't reach it. Well, let's just show them this. Where can we get more light? Let's do this. Guys, look at this. You can see... Oh yeah, there's some stuff in there. This is a thick wing too. Yeah. yeah. See, here's the channel for the LED. It chases back through here, gets held by, it gets hit by this decal, this orange, which that Dukes of Hazard color, it's called International Orange in case you're wondering. Oh yes, look at the vent guys, look at the vent. Ventilation is good. Yes. Yes. I love it. Ooh, those screws. Ooh, this is a BL-15 brushless outrunner. It's made in China. Weird. Oh my goodness, I'm So shocked. it's an EFLM15650, so it must be 650 kV, I'm guessing. But look at the control surfaces, they're huge. And then there's this brace right here. I'm not sure what to think on that. I'm assuming you can remove that. Oh, you can remove that, and then you can stick it in the hole over here. So then that makes this all one big flap, or it makes this one big aileron. I don't know. Personally speaking, I'm probably going to make this a flap. I thought there was another servo on here, so I feel cheated, Horizon. That's okay. Welcome to the program. All right, next thing. Let's get the other wing out. Now that I've spent like 20 minutes on that one wing. No, only nine. Only nine? I need to hurry up. Okay, yeah. This this feels chintzy. Chintzy. It's weak. It's going to get destroyed. I can already tell. But it's only going to get destroyed because I'm doing stupid things <laughs> that are really fun. Look at these vortex generators, guys. I missed the vortex generators on the first wing. Gorgeous. Look at that. Give them a close-up of that. Look at that. That is so gorgeous. Oh, so. I love it being molded into the wing. It's beautiful. I love the way that that looks. Very nice detail, super smooth on the foam. Horizon has not always been super great about that. These lines are very fine and uh, they are easy to see. You can definitely see, you're gonna see dimpling in this if it sits out in the sun though, so just be ready for it. It's gonna change, change the look. Hmm. Got that to protect the there's a release button, I think, or what you hold on to to pull the canopy off right here, so they have that protected. Oh no, there's a hole in my nut sack, bolt sack. Look at this. Explain I the am screw almost problem. certain that that's where the screws escape from. Yeah, there's no nuts in here, it's just screw sack. Just a screw sack, guys. So, quality control number seven, you should be ashamed. <laughs> All right, so then we've got this, goes over the back of the plane. We've got this, looks like some more plastic components, wing joiners. Oh, dude, those are skis! 
Whoa, whoa, guys, it comes with skis. It's not gonna work really well right now, because, yeah. Two. If my camera crew could only read my mind, they would know that I can't rip this tape. I'm oh, going. wow. This is fantastic, look at that. Look at that, you just feed the shaft right through the hole, and then there's a tie down point. That is awesome for the nose wheel. Oh, Do you wow, need those now? That. Sorry. Scissors. There's two shafts on this one. Okay. So awesome. That's cool. Didn't know for sure that they were coming. I do remember now from the video. We'll just lay those aside. We won't be using those right away. Oh wow. Oh geez. I might need a minute along with this. <laughs> this is gorgeous. Wow. Okay. You ready? No. Counter rotating props. Where the heck is the second prop, Horizon? It's up here. Okay, so these props are delicious. I love that they are counter rotating props. I am not gonna love it when I break one because exactly. I'm gonna have to buy two different props. Um, for those of you that don't understand the advantages of a counter rotating prop orientation, I'll explain that. One spins one way, one spins the other then you have no torque effect that wants to draw your plane into the ditch. <laughs> Seriously, camera crew, take it serious. Yeah, this is a real thing, okay? So, you see this, guys? What size are those? Um, if somebody needs to know what size they are, they are five-bladed. That part you can probably count from watching. Um, oh no, I got foam all over me. I do not see what size it is, and I will tell you as soon as I figure it out, guys. I'm sure it's probably in the manual. There's a bind plug that's floating in the book bag. I'm not really sure that that was a great move, but we'll get there eventually. By the way, if I haven't mentioned, it's called the EC1500 twin, okay? Twin as in two engines. That's part of the reason why it's $400, Horizon, it better be good. Otherwise, I'm gonna really be mad at you as I enjoy the cleaning of all of the spinners. And there's the tail section. Oh. This thing is going to go together fast. <clears throat> I mean, fast <laughs> by my standards is still like three hours, but. Okay. First thing I check when I get a Horizon plane is that they give me their both sides. Because <laughs> I, on my AT6, they sent me two of the same. It was exciting. So, yes, these things are really nice. You can see the hinges. Uh, where are yeah. we gonna go? Well, let's give him a let's give him a shot over here. Let's uh, put it up against the light bulb. Yes, carbon fiber. You guys can see that the carbon fiber makes these things strong. Oh yeah, they're stiff. Okay, so we'll lay that down. Pretty small tail, but I think it's uh, somewhat integral in this design. Okay, so the spinners. Obviously, with a five-bladed five -bladed counter rotating prop, you need to be careful. That is going to be a bear cat to build or make or find. So you better be nice to your props because I'm sure Horizon's going to charge like $300 for these things. <laughs> so just be aware of it. Protect your props. Protect your bank account. Oh, yes. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Look at this, ball joints, folks. Ball joints, ball joints. That is gorgeous. Look at the size of that. Oh yes, quick disconnect servo. That is awesome. I love it. Digital servos, I believe, all around on this thing. But we'll find that out. You can usually tell because digital servos are more expensive and they make a different noise. Even though they're the same. Whoa! Oh, that is, oh, that is so cool. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's good. That is really nice looking. The windshield looks cheesy, but everything else looks awesome. Look how smooth it is. Guys, I'm telling you. See the, the dimpling? Usually the dimpling is really bad on the Horizon products, but it's so smooth. Feel the camera crew. It's smooth, man. It is. Okay, good. Oh, there's a simulated strobe light right there. <clears throat> and if we look on the underside, we can see where the landing gear are. These are foamy, squishy type foam. 
not really super amazing. And I'd like to see rubber for this price point. But let's just show you how these things stick on here. Look, it snaps on to the extra length. And that is literally all there is to it. And that is pretty cool. I love it. Really easy. If it's not easy, people aren't going to do it. And if they don't do it, it's not fun. And if it's not fun, you won't see it on YouTube. So, also, there's this thing too, which does open. And so there'll be parachute drops in my future. Maybe not tonight. We are going to give a quick once over. Oh yeah, that's everything on the top. Now, make sure you flip it over and check the rear. I do not see anything stuck in the rear on this one. Usually the manual is taped to the back, not on this one. That is it, guys. So we can lay that down. These screws that came out, I'm just gonna pick those up and hope and pray that they're all there. Um, it sucks when you're shorted screws, guys. It's a bad problem. So hopefully we won't have it. We're gonna pause and get things situated, get the manual open, and we'll come right back. All right, guys, so we're back. Um, I did some double checking, pulled off the canopy, and the first thing I thought of was, okay, great, there's an addendum to the manual that states instead of having an EC3, it's got an EC5 connector. Okay, as you know, an EC5 connector is quite a bit bigger than an EC3, uh, capable of larger amounts of discharge, and I personally don't use EC3 or EC5. I know a lot of you guys that are Horizon fans probably do use them. So this is a step that you can just skip by. Check the description. We'll show timestamps for each of the different steps in this video, including the maiden and all that good stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to modify this easily. And it does work out nicely because if you'll look at this, these are wide in. So you just need the blacks to disconnect and the reds to disconnect. And this micro Excuse me, this is just a regular JST connector. Goes to the BEC, the battery eliminator circuit. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what if I'm gonna use two batteries, Brian? You can do that. You can actually use three batteries and the third of which could go into the JST lead, which would power your BEC in the event of a complete failure because of some stupid maneuver where you overheated the motor, blew out an ESC, whatever. I don't know, there's lots of conditions. Also, if somebody were to get creative and do differential thrust on here, which I'm sure somebody's gonna do it. Maybe not me, I'm not sure. I'll probably play with it later. You might wanna split these, who knows? So this is what we're gonna take. We're just gonna go ahead and use the Horizon adapter and we're gonna add an XT60. And I know some of you will be like, oh my God, an XT60, everybody's gonna die. Well, I promise you they won't, I'll prove it to you. But seeing is believing, unless of course you're one of my subscribers. <laughs> so, this is my bag of small children. <laughs> I've got lots of connectors in here, not the least of which, yes, just to make sure you guys understand, I have EC5 connectors here. I could make an EC5, which would be, I don't know if that's a female or a male, I, technically these are pins, so that'd be a female connector that would take me out and then adapt to one of my various packs. In my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off. I'm gonna just chap suey and we're gonna put this in here. So that's the next thing in the video. So for this video, you're gonna need a knife. You're gonna need some strippers. You're gonna need <laughs> these things, forceps, also known as, um, what are these things called? Forceps. 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 There's another name and I can't think of them right now. Um, and then of course you're gonna need your adapter. Now, as you know, EC5 and EC3 connectors have this awesome feature where you slide them in and they go snap forever. Unless of course it doesn't snap and then it doesn't work, which is why I don't use them, in case you're wondering. You don't have that problem with a million other styles of connectors, not the least of which is the beautiful XT60 or XT90. An XT90 would be even better in my book. But good luck in Horizon to use a Hobby King product from Hextronics. It's like the devil himself. Okay, so as you can see, oh man, I screwed that one up. Never mind. I'm going to get one that isn't screwed up. I'm a hoarder. You may have noticed this from my video series in the we, past. We had hoard videos also and your time. <laughs> so if you look right here, 
This is how I'm gonna build it, right? Now what's different about this is that I don't have anything to slide into snap so that I can't disassemble it in the future. And also it's quite a bit smaller, but it's okay. I don't have a size complex, so we're good with that. I'm gonna take some black heat shrink and I'm gonna slide it over this and then I'm gonna take some red heat shrink and slide it over the other one. And then I'm gonna solder these together and it's gonna be gorgeous. So, step one, talk a lot. Step two, do something. Oh, oh, I'm scared to do it. I'm to do it. It's done. Can't run this plane anymore. I'm bored of my warranty. Actually, no, that's not true. Don't listen to Horizon. They're just full of crap. They won't board your warranty over cutting off a connector. They understand that people do this. I have specifically addressed this with them, and they're always totally cool about it. Even though I'm using a competitive connector, they might not be real excited about an XT60, but you know what? So we're gonna go ahead and solder this in here. You see how these are labeled plus and minus, okay? Just consult your battery to make sure if you're in question. I'm not in question, so I'm not going to. You wanna get that thing in there and just get some gorgeous penetration right into the hole. See how I rammed that in there? I screwed up my lead, so I gotta fix that. So why do I have four sets? I have forceps because it's really easy to hang on to. I usually use a second XT60 connector of the opposite uh, variety, the other gender. Okay, in this case, I just slip them together like this. That gives me something to hang on to. It will also help to dissipate the heat. And that is one thing you have to be careful about is, is heat management when you're doing this. So you can see those clip and that holds on to it. Okay, like I said, guys, if you know how to do this or if you've seen me do it or you don't care to watch this, just skip ahead, you won't hurt my feelings, I promise. But I'm gonna still film it for those people that don't know what they're doing and they will inevitably ask me how to do this. Well, how do you, do I don't know, watch the video, it's right here. Okay, great. So you got the tip, it's nice and dirty because it's been, oh wow, look at all the sawdust. Ooh, yeah. Most people don't do this while their wives are filming them on their brand new <laughs> granite. Uh, because those people end up dead. Solder. I'm just going to get a little solder in here. Oh, yes. Oh, gorgeous. This is a, uh, this is a, um, was like a 60, 40, 44, number 44. So it's like 44%. And then whatever the remaining of 100 is the other half. Rosin core. So now that you've got no more questions in life, uh, where did I actually put the wire? See, this wire... It's hard to keep those braids tight. So one trick that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't is to get, get a little bit of flux on there. You get a little flux on there and you heat it up. Oh yes, now watch that stuff flow. Now you can get some solder and just let it transpose itself straight in there. That's gonna hold those wires together a little bit. And then obviously we're gonna need to get that pushed into the hole just like this, I, I am laying it down in the orientation I expect it to end up. Getting it nice and hot. Hot to the extent that the solder will allow me to slip it into the opening. And it is getting a little toasty on my fingers. That's all part of the show. And you'll notice that's slipping away. Typically, I will take something heavy like this and it will hold it down. If that doesn't work, I'll clamp it to the table. Now, the other thing you're probably saying to yourself is, self, you forgot your heat shrink. So you need to get some heat shrink and then you need to redo that. So while I get the heat shrink going, we're gonna look over here. These are from Hobby King. Wow, weird, okay. Here's a part number, here. If you ask me for a link, the link will probably be from Amazon or Banga. Just, if you buy it from our links, you help support the channel. Believe me, we're not making any money on it, but it'll help cover some of my habit, my horrible, expensive habit that I love so much. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we're gonna heat this back up. Just a little bit of pressure, and then we'll pop that out. Okay, looks nice and dirty. That's not what you want it to look like when you're done, but we're not done, thankfully. While that cools for a moment, what we'll do is we'll clip the other side. Now remember, this is not hooked up to a battery, guys. You don't need to worry about getting electrocuted. So, 
You should maybe have less caffeine though. Well, the other thing is when when you are working on a live battery, you want to be a little bit careful because um, there's a lot of potential and those things do like to catch on fire and burn people's houses down. And what I like to tell people about this hobby is it's a pretty safe hobby, but you can do two things. You can cut your hand up and you can burn your house down. So seriously, for a minute, be careful with your lipos and be careful with your hands, okay? If you can get past those two things, then the chances of hitting yourself in the head are pretty slim. I mean, I've done it, but <laughs> it's not, I'm, I'm not dead. I might be kind of weird, but. Okay, so don't mind me smoking my brand I'm new home. I gonna say. My wife loves these things. Okay, so we're just gonna get a little bit of, little bit of stuff in there. We're gonna do the same thing here. We didn't put flux on this side because it didn't, didn't seem like it was going to have any problems flowing. It was a little bit cleaner. Um, incidentally, when I strip back leads and there's oxidation on them, I get a little bit upset, but it is what it is. It's not the end of the world either. Okay, so that's cooled down, so I'm allowed to slide this back. Now, you'll notice it's not back all the way, so what's going to happen to that when I heat it, camera crew? It's going to prematurely shrink. That's never a good thing. Guys, if you have a problem with premature shrink shrinkage, mm -hmm. get it fixed. Yep because that will not serve you well. Anyway, so I'm gonna just slip this back here. There is a trick to keep that cool, and the trick is this. One, keep it expanded so that even if it shrinks, it doesn't compress as much. Two, you can use some Windex, which has silicone in it. Look at Three, that. just do it really quick before it shrinks. It's a lot harder than it looks, so I would not recommend number three as a solution. Uh, you can also use a gigantic piece of heat shrink. Ooh, ooh, one other, one other idea. You can take apart this JST connector and you can feed your heat shrink over the backside. Yes, yes, you actually can. So just be aware. There is a tab that's inside of here. And if you stick in a very, very fine tip screwdriver, you can actually pull that out. And then you can just ram it back in when you're done. Again. Just, it's sometimes a little easier said than done. So I'm just gonna warn you, if you do that method, be careful, be careful. Lots of dangers when ramming. Okay, so we have this prepped and ready to go into the, oh man, see that isn't big enough. See that, that's a little too tight. I'm gonna take a minute, I'll figure out what size I need and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab it and come right back to you guys. There's a Hobby King part number. This is bigger. Sorry guys, I must have just grabbed the, the non-matching color pair, whatever. So this will slip right over and then it'll slide back just like so, okay? See, it's kind of doing the same thing where it's wanting to bind up, okay? Oh, it's gonna be tough to do this, but I'm gonna be able to do it. I can do it. So guys, my camera crew is trying to give you a good view of this, and she's doing a wonderful job, but just keep in mind, this is kind of a pain in the butt. I hate doing it, but I've done it many, 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 many times, and if you can't solder, now is the perfect opportunity to learn to solder. Uh, get yourself a solder, soldering iron, and just, just do it. It's not really that hard. Um, if you do it wrong, have somebody check it over. You know, if you're not sure you can, you can handle it, have somebody check it over for you. All you do is you heat the work and then you, you allow it to flow in. You don't just like set it on top of there like chicken crap. You're not welding, you're soldering. Solder flows. Okay, so you heat it up, get it nice and toasty, and then touch it in there. And it should more or less allow you to, to work it. But I'm still trying to balance doing this and keeping that heat shrink from shrinking down prematurely because we all know that premature shrinkage is, is not, it's a no-go. Okay, see it's starting to shrink there. Watch that, see that? Starting to shrink, that's bad. Lick my fingers, cool it down. Woo, that's warm. Okay, so, like I said, sometimes it's a little tricky. I'm gonna grab a cool rag. And when I say a cool rag, I mean a wet rag. A wet rag will quickly become warm, so just be aware of that. I'm just gonna go ahead and cool that just a little bit, just the heat shrink, that's all I care about. I'm not trying to cool the joint. You don't wanna cool the joint, you wanna cool the heat shrink. That's gonna stop it from shrinking. Okay, then we'll just put that off to the side. My goal is to quickly get some solder to suck in there, and then I'm gonna slide this back down, okay? You guys haven't seen a mod video from me in a long time. 
And I feel bad about that. My shop is still in shambles. It doesn't really exist yet. It's in boxes. It is. Oh, man, I hope we don't set off the smoke alarm. That would be yeah, so annoying. that'll be fun. Okay, so it's wanting to fall, so that means we're getting good penetration. Okay, we're going to leave it. Let it set up. Now it's holding itself up, and you'll notice it's shrunk down. And you're like, oh, no, it's the end of the world. Ryan, why did you tell me to do that? Well, we're going to fix it anyway. There's a trick, there's a trick. Even if it shrinks a little bit, you'll be able to get by. So I'm gonna cool it down just a little bit, make sure it doesn't shrink any further, okay? Premature shrinkage happens to the best of us. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. The way I've usually been able to do it is with a super, super small screwdriver. Uh, sometimes you can just do an X-Acto knife. I'm gonna see if I can find the screwdriver. Oh, I have an X-Acto knife also. So two ways to do this, you can either cut this or you can lift it. So in my case, I'm just gonna score this tip a little bit, just like this, and then I'm just gonna pull this up. And I just wanna get the outside heat shrink, okay? So now I've cut that, just the outside of the heat shrink, a little teeny bit, okay? Now I'm gonna grab a little tiny screwdriver right here, here's one. I don't know if that's quite tiny enough. See? Oh yeah. We're just gonna stretch it out a little bit, guys. Don't be afraid to ram it in there and stretch it out some. It's all part of the show. Now I'm just gonna grab that and slip it down if I can get it to go. And it's not gonna probably go super easy because it's shrunk down some and there's all these bumps and things that it's gonna try to hang on to, but we're gonna make it happen. And it's gonna work just fine. So these are the moments where you're thinking, Ryan, I thought this was an unboxing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Believe me, I wanted to be flying right now. But the manual said EC3. That's right, it did. And then they unset it and they said EC5. So I guess that's what we get. Now I'm gonna get a different screwdriver because that one kind of sucks. It's, it's, literally, the, the it's literally the same <laughs> screwdriver. Um, here's a flat one, this might work better. So I don't know if you guys at home can kind of tell the plight I'm going through here, but really it's not the first time I've done this. It's just frustrating and uh, I'm used to it. You guys are used to it if you've watched my videos. Okay, so now you guys can see that. That black on black probably is not working well, is it, for the camera, is it? No, probably not super good. Okay, well, we'll try to make this short. Okay, so now it's, it's starting to want to slide, okay. Ah, dang it, now pulled this back. What the heck? Uh, I don't know if you guys could see what just happened. Can, you think they could see on camera? Yeah, a little bit, because it's pulling that other end off, right? Yeah, it's pulling the one that's under it yeah. back. The Horizon Hobby installed one. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm halfway tempted to just say screw it all and just, just run a... Oh, there it goes. It finally slipped for me. Okay, so now that it's slipped, it's not shrunk yet. I'm gonna get the other one back where it belongs. And then you see that little clip we made. Now I can take a, a decent quality pair of scissors and I can actually trim around so that we can get this seated nicely. You see, now this will take just a second. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut it from both sides until we have a nice clean edge. You see this? And this is where you have to be just a little bit delicate. Take your time. But the video's been more than five minutes, Brian. I got things to do. They took my pause button away. If they, if they <laughs> took your pause button away on YouTube, you're in trouble. Okay, so now we can slip this down. The world's hardest method for doing this is what you're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. And yet it will work perfectly. Do we have like a lighter or yeah, something? Yeah, in the very back. Oh, there is. yes, right here. You, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I, I virtually come up with all the tools I need from my upstairs kitchen. You're welcome for That's your right. drawer. You're, you're welcome, YouTube, from my wife. She says, thank you for my husband having all this crap in my kitchen. kitchen. Oh, 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 come, oh, come of on. Course. There we go. Yes. Okay, that worked. See, look, simple as that, all you gotta do is those 17 sets, no big deal, real super easy. <laughs> 
Okay, now we're gonna do that on the other side. And um, I mean, you guys have been warned. You already know what you're getting into, but I'm just gonna go ahead and what the heck, who knows? If I don't film it, it'll take me 30 seconds and it'll be perfect. And you'll be like, whatever, it took you 10 minutes. So I'm gonna show you how long it took. Now that you've challenged me. Okay, so I'm just getting a little solder in there, letting it flow. Now, I'm gonna do this smarter. I'm going to be a smart feller, not a fart smeller. It's my wife's favorite catchphrase. Totally. She uses it all the time. <laughs> uh, except for ever. So we're just going to let that flux flow. Okay, it's getting a little toasty on my fingertips. See how I did that, guys? See that now? I'm going to let that suck right in there. Okay, good. So now I'm going to let that cool down. Why are you gonna let it cool down, Brian? You need it to be hot to bond. Yes, but I gotta get the heat shrink over it, okay? Didn't you just watch the last 20 minutes? Okay, so we are going to, you're gonna wait a second on you. And we're gonna grab you and squish you a little bit, just like that. There was a high spot. Okay, we're gonna grab this rag. It's not cold, but it's wet. Now wet will transmit heat quickly, so be ready to be burned. And we're gonna cool it down just a little bit because I don't like to get burned. I don't mind if my rag gets burned. Oh wait, this is a kitchen rag. They <laughs> <laughs> think my wife doesn't know what's going on. Wait. Good thing she's really, really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're all com comedians tonight. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna heat that up. We're gonna let it flow, and then we're gonna get good contact right there. It does look like a Parkinson's patient is doing this. Sorry for anybody who has Parkinson's. Um, okay, so now, normally I would like to stick it in the hole better. Oh, you son of a gun, you shrunk down, you shrunken shrinker. Did you see what happened, hon? I did. That son of a shrinking shriek, heat shrinker. All right, well, whatever, we have good penetration. Oh, God bless it, you. Now I have to paint these bristles square again. Man, that's really shrunk down. I don't know if we're gonna get out of that. Now is when I'm gonna get these questions from somebody and they'll be like, why didn't you just have Megan fix it? <laughs> I should, I should try. Okay, get in there. All right, so now that's that's really toasty on my fingertips, so I'm just gonna let that cool for a sec. Um, the other thing I did that screwed up is I took my weight off at the end of that, so it was one to walk away from me. Okay, so now we get to see again, which I kind of doubt it's gonna work as good this time. So we're gonna cool that down a little bit once it's cool. And th yeah, that's right, guys, that's right. That's all because I put an EC5 on there. I could have just built a stinking EC5 adapter but that would have been way too easy. Okay. Because then I'd have this gigantic EC5 to XT60 adapter. Yes. Can you, can you cut a piece of heat shrink lengthwise? And if you like wrap it around and it shrinks back on itself, will it stay? No. Why not? Because do you want to you want to show the folks at home what happens? <laughs> no. It, it's going to have the extreme premature shrinkage. It will. Okay, everybody at home that's always wondered what would happen if you shrunk this. For, for those of you in the hobby, <laughs> you probably already know this, but this is what happens when your wife helps you film things. Okay, hey, so everybody, so here it goes. Ideas. Here it goes. You thought you were going to watch an unboxing tonight. <laughs> oh, hilarious. When watch this, what happens. When this works Whoa, perfectly. it's like bacon. Look at this. Oh, bacon. But Delicious. you can't wrap it around there and then do that? And it won't oh, shrink down? Um, does that look like it's working? That's not what I said. Well, I mean, I did shrink it a little bit much, but... No, to answer your question, folks at home, um, it will not work like that, unfortunately. Well, fine. It would be sweet if it did. There is such a thing as a heat shrink that you can wrap around and it'll shrink down, but it's not for this type of application. It's way too big. And I think they call it a cold splice or something like that. I don't know. She's just trying to save the people at home some time. Mm, you could also tape around this if you're really okay with that sort of thing, but I'm, I'm not. This is a pretty critical connection, and that, that connection is crappy. I'm not real thrilled with the way I did that, but 
you know, worse things in life have happened, I believe. Although this connection is pretty bad, meaning it's ugly. There's a big drip on the backside that you guys couldn't see earlier. So what I'm doing is I'm now taking a screwdriver and I'm trying to release the um trying to release the heat shrink okay this this i had hoped that you wouldn't have to see me doing this but to be honest with you you've seen me doing it before so i don't know <laughs> what you expected it's kind of like every teenage mother's dream <laughs> see me doing it before nothing new see this i lifted it up Okay, so now I'm just gonna, I'm just kind of working it so that it will pop free. Okay, so now that it's sort of halfway popped free, I'm probably gonna have to do the other side. See, I'm just taking the screwdriver, guys, and I'm just working it under there gently, rocking it, making sure that I don't break through the heat shrink. If you break through the heat shrink, you pretty much get to start again. You're gonna have to make sure you're doing some magic with that camera there, hon, because I am having trouble keeping this where they can see. See what I'm doing, guys? It's mm -hmm. about to about to come through the other side. Oh, ooh. See, I got a small hole there. That's no good. We'll see how it shrinks down when I get it done. Now, there is also another product you can use that's like um, electrical tape in a can. I'm not a big proponent of doing that. Not with a not with a hot joint like this. Because this is gonna be where all the power transmits through. Like for everything, including the BEC. And this is why some of you might choose to have a, a third battery or a second battery that would run just the controls. Um I believe that runs on like six to twenty-five volts DC. So you get a whole operating range on that. Okay, so now I'm holding this wire and I'm just stretching it out a little bit. Okay. Come on, pop off of there, you little son of a gun. There's just one little spot that won't let go. It really, really wants to hang on. There's not heat activated glue in this heat shrink. That's why it's weirding me out that it's hanging on so good. Okay, so now this is gonna allow us to slip. See, I told you it's not the end of the world, but talk about a pain in the butt. Whenever you see a little short wire like that, I always cringe because I'm like, how am I going to get a heat shrink on there without having it screw up something? And I always have this problem when it's this small. That's why building adapters is a real pain in the butt. But if I built that adapter, then I could use it on more than one plane. There's another thing you can do too, and that is to actually slip the wire itself over the top of a, a splice like that but again once it heats up it's going to relax and it's going to have the ability to to come off so you don't want that while you're flying okay so now that that's pretty much unheat treated now i can just slip that down and you see i mean it's not it's not perfect but it'll work okay and then what I want to do is I want to make sure wherever that little pinhole sized hole is, which is right next to the base of the Y there, mm -hmm. I want to put that in a spot where I'm not going to have any vulnerability. So I just rotated it. Because that, that hole is going to disappear as soon as I heat it up. Because you can heat shrink these things a couple of different times and they'll work. They'll work okay. And see, the other good thing about this solder joint is because I had that giant blob on there, that blob will actually hang onto the heat shrink so it can't back off. Okay. Okay. That sucked exactly as bad as I figured it would <laughs> suck. And now we're ready to receive. Now we're ready to receive. Just give it a quick double check, make sure your polarity is right. And now we're gonna go ahead and pause it and we'll pick back up where we left off. All right, YouTube, we're back. I uh, just got done building this little adapter. I'm gonna show you putting that back in and then we're gonna assemble this thing. So I use XT60s. This is the point where you wanna come back if you were skipping past because you're gonna use the EC5 that's provided. So obviously we're just gonna plug in the JST, make sure your polarity is right and it will go easy. If you try to force it in, that means you're probably plugging it in them wrong. It doesn't matter which one goes to which. These are just Y cables. 
one goes to the left wing, one goes to the right wing, and in this case, it goes to the connector. So really, it's not even going to the wing yet at all. So then these things, these are nice because they tell you what's going on. Um, input voltage range is six through 25 volts. The output range is five slash six volts at three amps continuous, five amp burst. Now, the five amp burst, that's for all the control surfaces. So keep in mind, that's the radio system and the controls. So the receiver, the transmitter, all that stuff, tel telemetry, any of the accessories you add, you need to keep in mind the LEDs, all that crap. Everything but the motors themselves, okay? So getting back to the installation and building part, this should go pretty quick. I did a quick survey. Obviously, I'll be using my DX18 here. I think I'm gonna start with a 5,000 milliamp 3S pack. This will run on 3 or 4S. We'll see how it does on 3S. I'll be using a, a voltage alarm, 2 through 8S voltage alarm. We have links to all this stuff down below. Check it, buy it. Help support the channel if you want. One problem I had in the manual, if you would come around camera crew, is there was two addendums. Uh, that wasn't the problem. Looks like we have to go to minus 50 for the flaps. If you're on uh, the DX7, DX8, and then all the way down, I'm the DX18. So it says the corrected is minus 50 and minus 100 for flaps, as opposed to the plus 50, plus 100. So you don't want those backward, it will cause problems for you. In this plane, you can actually run them backward, keep in mind, okay? Stock configuration shows an aileron here. I don't want it that way. I want my flaps to be big and the ailerons to be small. I feel like I'm gonna have plenty of deflection here. We'll find out if I'm right. So, when we get to that point, the center of gravity I've already marked for you here. Show them this, like this. Center of gravity is 65 through 75 millimeters from the leading edge. This wing is simple, it'll be easy to find that. We're gonna find it now, I believe it's probably this line. If they were nice to us, that's the line. So. 65 to 75 millimeters back from the leading edge would be 65 would be, what do you know? This line is just in front of the CG. Okay, so right in this area. So you wanna be between here and here, okay? Now you can put a piece of paper on there or you can just kind of roll it. Whoops. Yeah, so 75, okay. So you're basically between, between here and here. That's your center of gravity. You gotta be careful with cargo and stuff that you keep it in that range, okay? All right, so that all being understood, the binding procedure is here. I'm just gonna like have my camera crew show this. You already have the manual, surely. If you need to pause it, do what you gotta do, or you can just go download this from the site. The key principal difference to get safe select is you put the plug in, you start the binding procedure, and then you pull it out before you do it. So that, that's the only difference. Otherwise you just leave it in and then it binds for AS3X only. Okay, I'll show you binding. There's gonna be a radio setup. I'll link to that at the bottom as well. So this is the computerized transmitter setup. You'll note that this is a correction here, okay? So make sure that you're aware of the correction. Sorry about the glare guys. This is a really high quality manual. Horizon does a great job with manuals. However, my issues, as I mentioned earlier, are these pictures do not exactly match up with what you get, okay? So as you can see, this piece is not shaped at all like the thumb screw they show. Now that's not a huge issue in my book, but it could confuse some people. So just be aware they don't exactly match up. And then also, now this could be from my uh, screw sack being ripped. They show a two by 20 millimeter self-tapping button head. Now, I don't know if this is a two by 20 self-tapping button head, but if you ask me, it does not look like the picture because that is a flat and this is a pointy, but self-tapping lends itself to, to having a pointy tip, okay? Now, whether or not I got enough is yet to be seen. And I honestly do not know what this thing is for yet. I'll figure it out eventually. It looks like it might be some sort of a spare or something or another. We'll figure it out. Okay, so assembly is gonna be easy on this plane. I'm going to go ahead and work on it now. The first step is to put the tail on, okay? So we're gonna do that. Obviously my first step was to build the adapter. 
There's screw holes here and here, so be privy to that, okay? This will plug itself in when you slide it in, so you gotta be careful to go straight in and not at an angle, okay? See that plug, that servo plug? So I'm gonna slip this back. I'm gonna listen and feel. Sorry guys, you gotta slip it in this way. My bad. You do have to rock it in. Okay. I felt purchase. Make sure you do a control surface test. That's all I'm gonna say. So, now we get to figure out if these screws look correct. This side does not have a, a, a hole showing this side. This side will receive the screw head. So that feels like it's the right size screw. Okay, you can see that head will recess. That's how you know which way to do it. You can consult the manual if you're curious. I'm not gonna consult the manual because the manual doesn't even really show the right picture. So I'm just gonna assume that it's maybe been changed since the manufacturing on this plane started. These cheap Chinese screws that you, screwdrivers you get from like free ring are awesome. They're like my favorite little cheap screwdrivers. And when I say cheap, I mean free. Well, not free, they're included with your yeah. $200 plane or whatever. So I guess if you wanna call that free. So we will pause it as I tighten screws. If I run into a problem, I will come back and show you. Make sure you don't squish your phone too much. Okay, so now that we have that screw in on both, the back one was actually quite a bit harder to get aligned, but no big deal, definitely doable. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and assemble this. This is very straightforward. You've got a carbon fiber, the thinner one, carbon fiber rod. There's a receiver that receives it. And then you slide this through. Now what's cool about this is there's no servos in these. The servo is actually attached to this. So that's kind of nice. I'm actually just feed this through first. Get it about even. I felt like it was wanting to push through the, the wing a little bit. Okay. Then just get your proper alignment here and then slip it down in. Oh, that Ooh. is awesome. That was really, that was really easy. easy. It, it's oh there's a snap too guys it's you can release it and then pull it back out you don't even have to put a screw in see look that is awesome guys horizon good job way to go really happy with some of these features that you guys are finally starting to make now that i don't need to drive anywhere with my airplanes okay so that's in there that tail is heavy it does not sit down very good without a battery in it so far, but once you get the wings on, it'll be fine. So the tail section is done already, it took like two minutes. Um, okay, so then the wings um, are configured as such. Like I said, the ailerons are long. This is the part where you get to decide um, how you want to configure the wing. In my case, I want the flaps to be bigger. You guys may not agree. You may want to do the larger ailerons or even a full length aileron if you really wanted to do that. I don't know why you would ever want to do that, but I'll show you how to change it. The manual discusses all this crap, so I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, guys. It's just literally spelled out for you in black and white. But if you're like me, you don't like watching or reading manuals, so you'd rather watch me do it, learn from me doing it, than the manual. Okay, so it slips out to the side, and then it pops out, and it's got a number. It says two. Okay. And yes, this is taped on, so we're gonna have to probably go ahead and redo the tape. I'm not gonna use that same tape, so it just slips to the inside, and then it pops right out, okay? Super, super easy. It says one, then it says two, okay? Now, it says one, and then it says two. See how that's more or less straight, okay? Look at these. This says three and four. So that's a three and four. Mm. So now, how do I tell which one's which? I don't know, I didn't notice that part. Three and four. Okay, so one, one and two, and then three and four. Okay, so that must be like this, guys, because of that angle, okay? So that says three and four. To be honest with you, 
this must go on the other wing, and then this one says um, five and six. Oh, great, that's even less clear. Okay, so if that's one, two, three, four, so this is three and four, except that's, should be like this, what? That doesn't make sense, unless it's upside down. That's probably the way that's supposed to go, I guess. Again, some of these things, it'd be better to not have to figure out, but whatever. I'm just glad we get these cool features built in. And uh, we'll just use the high quality tape. I'm not gonna worry about that. We'll, we'll get another tape that's gonna be appropriate for that. These are not numbered either. It says eight on it. That says seven. <laughs> um, that doesn't make any sense at all. Maybe some year I'll figure it out. So you just get that where you can pop them over and then they lift straight out. Keeping them in the same orientation for your own ease. And then this, I believe, see that, I don't think that's right, I think it's backward. I think this is supposed to be like that. See, that slides in perfectly then. Whatever. So, oh, it says six there, and it says six, and then it says five, and then it says five. So it does. Show the people at home. That was hard to see, guys. Five, five, six, six. Five, five, six, six. Okay, great. Mm, okay. So now that that's connected, then you can just slip these little clips back in, and then slide them over, and then you'll tape them in position so that they can't be undermined easily. Now when the servo articulates, wow, that's awesome. Okay, we're gonna pause and get that tape. Okay, so I'm cutting this tape in half and I'm just uh, applying that there to just hold that from slipping out of its locked position. You're not holding that in, it's clipped in. There's a machined tab. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking some tape, clipping about an inch, holding the tape this way and clipping it that way. It's not rocket science. There's more than one way to skin this cat. Okay, so now that that's done, we'll go ahead and pause, we'll get the other side done, and then we'll come right back. All right, folks, so we've got that done. Um, the next step is putting on the, the actual spinners and props, okay? So this shouldn't be really all that hard, but just keep in mind that they tell you how it works in the manual. This is one of the times where having the manual is really helpful. So as you can see, this one is gonna go counterclockwise, agreed? Okay. So that one's going counterclockwise. And the blades cut like this, counterclockwise. And when it's going counterclockwise, it's gonna pull the plane forward. They're not marked uh, super clear. Okay, so this one's gonna go counterclockwise. Okay. Yeah, knowing where the front is compared to the back is a little bit of a challenge. So but I, I have faith in you, you'll be able to figure it out. Because when you're looking at them, there's a little detent on the front, and then on the back, there's not a detent. I kind of wish they would have put like an F or something on there. Yeah. So this is the way it's gonna go. They're gonna spin toward the, s like this, okay? So that's gonna make the plane go that way. Hmm. Spinner, undo the screw. There is a left and a right spinner. Again, they might be marked. I'm not gonna go through the trouble to try to find it on the plastic, because I bet I can't find it real easy. There is a washer and a knot. Now remember, these do matter because these are gonna be threaded, hopefully wrong on one and right on the other. That is correct. This one will be correct for that. So I'm just verifying. Process of elimination does not always work well for this sort of thing. Okay, so watch how this sits. Okay, so that goes all the way flush. And then this is the wing we're dealing with right now. That's gonna work. So you literally just take this collet and you just slip it over the prop shaft. That is so cool. I love it. Super easy. Um, and then take your washer and nuts. Slide the washer onto the prop shaft, then the nut, 
this is where it baffles me that we don't have like a lock or a jam nut or something like that. But truthfully, I've never had issues with these because if you thread this the correct direction, then it will tighten as it torques on. Okay, so you get that tight all the way back and you brace your prop and you grab yourself a crescent wrench or whatever because I don't care what size this is and I'm not gonna go figure it out. Then you torque this, okay? And that bites the collet onto the shaft. The collet back here collapses upon the shaft. It's wanting to slip on me, so I'm having to hold the back while I do this. Keep in mind, these blades are a little bit sharp. So you wanna be careful you don't cut yourself. Remember I was saying earlier, there's two ways to get injured in this hobby. And it's not what people think. It's getting cut on props and it's getting uh, fires from the lipos. So you gotta be careful about avoiding those things and you'll be, you'll be golden. And then follow all the whatever BS rules that people tell you to follow. <laughs> okay, so this is tight. Toit like a tiger. Oh, that is so sweet looking. Oh, so cool. Okay, great. So now that that one's done, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And to be perfectly honest, I am not gonna film it because it's literally the exact same thing except it's done the other way. So we'll come right back. All right, I'm asking you. Okay, so folks, um, basically we've got the two props on and boy, do they look gorgeous. Really happy with the way they look. They look nice. One thing I'm not real thrilled about is the gap between my motor cowling and the actual spinner is a little bit greater on this side. I don't know why, I tried pushing it back. I made sure I had it all the way back. And so probably just a really small, like one millimeter manufacturing defect. So, okay, so now the next step is pretty obvious. We're gonna put the wings on. Um, the, the wing is a pretty straightforward operation in terms of installing it. Slide your carbon fiber spar through. Get your wing positioned so that it can slide through this hole. And then you're gonna align it and it's gonna go into these things. And you, you literally can't do it wrong. It's so easy. <laughs> and I love it. Very good fit. Very good fit. Love it. So we're gonna just set that down and let that relax for a minute. I cannot imagine doing this in a field, but I know a lot of you guys will do that exactly. Um, I don't like disassembling planes. This is a 1.5 meter plane. You could definitely take the wings off. You could take one wing off to make it fit in your car or your truck easy. Um, but this, this tail is tall, so you're going to probably have to undo that. Um, but the back, the back part, I don't think you're going to take off the tail sections. <laughs> I don't think these are going to be a problem. The wings, the wings are going to be part of the problem. So this one's giving me a little bit more trouble. And we're in. That is really cool, guys. Very striking looking. Um, I hate to waste time to do a photo op, but we are doing exactly that. Oh yeah, that is so gorgeous. 1.5 meters, not screwed together. Really cool. Okay, now we're gonna screw it back together. Um, there's four screws for this and they provided a crap load of these. I don't even know where these go, to be honest. Hmm. Um, evidently you can take the landing gear off maybe for this, or that's an FPD mount. Maybe that's what that is. I honestly don't know guys. I feel kind of bad because I should know this, but I just haven't figured it out yet. Um, I think you can take off the landing gear. And then you can probably put those over the holes. That'd be a lot of screws. Yeah, that seems like a lot of screws still. Although there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, no, 10, 11, yeah, 12. Yeah, it'd be about all of them. Yeah, that might explain all the extra screws. And then of course we've got this, this thing opens and we have to set that when we're doing our radio setup. Mm. But this is held on by the thumb nuts, okay? So the front ones are the longer ones and the rear ones are the shorter ones. So these are 20 millimeters and then the rear ones are 16 millimeters. Um, just not sure if they're taking. Kind of hard to tell if it's biting or not. Sometimes these things you really gotta work them the first couple of times. I love that it's a toolless install. 
if this works, although it doesn't feel like it's working <laughs> yet. Um, I mean, honestly, this is kind of one of those things where you hope it works, but if it doesn't perfectly align, I guess I'm not going to be super surprised. It's definitely not starting, and I feel like I have good alignment. Not sure if I'm doing this wrong. I don't really understand what I could be doing wrong. Okay, I got it to bite on this side. I was applying pressure from below, which helped to align the hole in the middle. And then it's definitely biting and I definitely have that one in. So I'm gonna push with my middle finger right up on the center of that area where this hole is and see if I get lucky to get that alignment right. By the way, these nylon screws are not indestructible, so you need to be mindful about that as you're trying to force the alignment of these. I'm actually just gonna pull this wing out quick and just make sure I don't have something weird going on. Oh man, Whew. that doesn't feel like it wants to come out at all. So I'm gonna grab the engine nacelle that five-bladed prop is like sharp too, so be careful. Okay, so I pulled it out. I'm gonna take my nylon bolt and I'm just gonna see if that thing lines up. Oh, it most definitely does go through. So I don't know if there's maybe just like a chunk of foam or something in the way. I'm gonna grab the end of the wing and push it in. This is one of those steps that Horizon doesn't like to see online because it's like they want this to be super easy. But this is the real deal. It doesn't want to it doesn't want to start. Okay, I got it. I pushed really really hard and then I pulled in really really hard and I got the alignment just right. You can tell it's very distinct when it bites. Okay, so we'll do the back ones and we'll we'll actually go ahead and film this. I know it's not very exciting, but this is part of people making a decision as to whether or not they like this thing. By the way, the other day I had somebody asking me, did you buy that plane? Yes, I did buy this plane with my own money. <laughs> and yes, it was $400. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty expensive airplane, so this better be good. I mean, so far it looks good, but to be honest with you, I really want the F-16 too, but I just felt like this was gonna be a better more fun plane to fly than the F-16. The F-16 is, is cool, and it's beautiful, and it's scale, which are all things that I love, but you can only do high-speed passes so many times. This thing is gonna be timber-esque, I believe. It's gonna be the next timber. You just wait and see. Except it's a different price point. I don't think they'll sell as many of them mm -hmm. because 400 bucks is a lot for an RC plane, if you ask me. Oh, for a foamy. So, all right, guys, um, I am going to fight this, and we'll come right back, and I'll let you know if I find a trick. Okay, guys, so I got the other side, and basically what I'm having to do is I'm pressing on. There's a plastic re There's a plastic piece, and I'm kind of pushing up on it, and that forces the alignment just so. I do not want to break this nylon screw. But see, I'm having a really hard time getting the alignment so that this thing will take, take the screw. I'm sure that I'm not gonna be the only guy, so I'm gonna try to hold the nose up against this and see if I can kind of walk this back and forth until I can get, you can tell definitely when you get purchase on that nylon screw, um, cause you immediately feel it. It was really hard to get that back one there, so all these quick release items, if they don't work, they're not very helpful. You could totally just put a metal screw in here and be done with it. I don't really believe in nylon screws personally. I think it's a waste of time, but maybe on a, maybe on a, maybe on a slope soaring plane. Okay, I'm gonna fight it some more. I thought maybe I had the ticket and I didn't. Okay, so I got it. And the only way I could get it 
show them here. I'm just kind of squishing the foam. I had to really, really, really rail on this thing to get this in there. And I do not like that at all. But, I mean, to be honest, guys, the first couple of flights, you're going to find that those stress points anyway, no matter what you do. But you can see I can barely turn it like I'm going to break the head of the, the mm -hmm. nylon bolt off. And then these aren't going to be removable. Um, if you do break one, heat up your soldering iron, touch the tip, make a screwdriver hole, and then you're ready to go. So this is technically assembled, guys. All right, 1.5 meter size class. I'm six foot tall for size comparison. It is very, very pretty. And uh, yes, I do want to put the decals on, but no, I am not gonna do the decals now. I want to try to fly this thing for you tonight, but I am afraid that we might run out of time. So we, we're going to jump into radio setup next. Okay guys, so we're back with the EC1500, and which we need to do the radio setup. And as you can see from the beautiful sunset, we're almost out of time, which is a big no-go because I want to maiden this thing where we can see it and all that stuff, but we are going to do a radio setup right now. Um, top comes off, two magnets, and then a keeper in the front. Super easy, works really good. If you watched the video earlier, there was an EC5 on here. I don't use EC5, so I went ahead and modified this to have an uh, uh, XT60 connector so that I can use my XT60s. As you can see, this battery uh, battery bay is gigantic. Yeah. I do not like the way that this wire comes up for the nose gear. I think that that was a miss, a swing and a miss by Horizon. That really should have been out of the way better, but whatever, I guess I'm gonna tape it down so that it's out of the way because look it's it could get into the mm -hmm. it could get into the mechanism so we're going to do that real quick um i've done this a number of different ways i always come back to whatever's the lightest way to do it uh do it that way if you can so i'm just going to put a fairly big piece of tape across there to hold that down so that when this nose gear steers it can't get caught okay and then I'm just going to do a little bit longer piece like this. And that's just going to basically hold that along the side. And, you know, it's, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. It's literally just holding it in there. So you could use a big piece of packing tape. You have a little better purchase, maybe. So once you get that done, then we're going to go ahead and come back to the manual. Now, remember, there's an addendum that comes with the manual. Mine sitting over by the batteries. Um, the only thing that's going to be different is that these are supposed to be negative and negative on the flat position. For the DX18, in my case, I have a Gen 1, so this says DX18. DX18 is the same either way, Gen 1, Gen 2, doesn't matter, okay? So first things first, you're going to turn on your radio system. We're going to try to do this so that you guys can see. I had my Trojan last time. You're going to click your button, scroll all the way down to System Setup, click System Setup. Disconnect RF, that light shuts off. Go model select, all the way down to the bottom. You can go to add new model. Or you can go here and you can go to model utilities and all that stuff. I'm just gonna go to the bottom, system setup, disconnect RF, model select, all the way at the bottom. Add new model. We're gonna create it. Okay, now we're gonna go to model name. Or model type, always make sure you're in the right model type. Airplane, data will be reset. Now, why do you do that first before you do the name? Because you don't want to have to type the name twice. It says Acro. Do yourself a favor, Esteban. <clears throat> name your models. It will save yourself all sorts of trouble later. As you can see on this page, it says EC1500 1.5 meter. That tells me someday they're gonna have one that's bigger than 1.5 meter. So we're gonna scroll this in, we'll start it, and then we will pause, because it's boring to watch this process. You can pause it now. Okay. All right, so we're model EC 1500, 1 1.5 meter. We'll go back, aircraft type, 
So this is where you're gonna consult your manual, okay? So we have our battery ready, we have our voltage alarm ready, we have our bind plug ready, but we're not gonna necessarily need, why do I have scissors here? I don't know. I don't know if I was about that. Oh yeah, that's right. So in our case, model utilities, model type airplane. Okay, wing type is one aileron, one flap, okay? So, see how this says normal? Change it to one aileron, one flap. And you're like, but Brian, there's a bunch of them on there. Yeah, there's only two channels controlling these ailerons and that flap. Now, later on, you may so choose to add flapperons and spoilerons as well as flaps. And then you can do crow with this plane, which would be really cool. I do not have the programmer for an AS3X receiver, also known as the AR636B for Bravo. That must be the second revision. That's a DSMX receiver that they've used in the bind and fly model. So if you want to change that, you have to reprogram it. I do not know how to do that yet. I will eventually, and I'll show you when I figure it out. But for now, this says on here, the wing type is one aileron, one flap, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and go to next, whoops, click that, and then we're gonna go to next, and I'm gonna change the picture to a suitable picture that makes sense. Actually don't know which picture it's gonna be. Well, that one's probably about as close as it gets. We'll see what else we got. Yeah, that one's as close as it gets. I bet if I updated the firmware on this thing, it would probably give me some new pictures because Horizon likes to add some pictures in there, which is pretty cool. If you have the iX12, then you can do all sorts of cool things. I don't know enough about it because I don't have one yet, but I will eventually. <laughs> so, as you can see here, set channel assign to gear on channel 5, switch A, and then flaps on D. Okay, so that's whatever you want it to be. But I'm going to go to the channel assign and just figure out what we've got. So, channel assign, and if you go to gear... If you go to next, you can see where gear is set to A, and they said A, and then flaps, which I guess in this case, they aren't really set up yet. Oh, auxiliary one, and they wanted auxiliary one to be D. Well, I don't use D for flaps. I use this switch for flaps, which is B. So I'm gonna go to previous, flap, where the heck do I do that? See so how it's not letting me go to aux one? I don't, I don't understand why it's not letting me go to aux one. Oh, you know why? Because I don't have the flat mode assigned yet. So now once you reset, you can go in here and the first thing you're gonna do is set up a throttle cut. You're gonna turn on throttle cut. You're gonna flip it to whatever switch you want. I always use switch H. Dang it. Switch H. Negative 130, stupid default setting, put it to negative 100, then you're gonna test it. Move your throttle stick. Note that I have it in my cut position. This is a safe position, okay? That's my flying position. Now my throttle moves. In the monitor, you can see that. See, the throttle position goes up, and if I cut it, it goes down to zero. That's important, that's how you save your fingers. See, I've got all 10 of them. You can have 10 too, unless you've already lost them. Then you can't have them back. So then the second thing we're gonna do is go to flap system. We're not gonna inhibit it, but we're gonna instead assign it to switch B. That's the way I use. I keep accidentally bumping that, sorry guys. Okay, so there's B. So now we can set the flap positions right in this menu. See it says set flap system, switch D. Okay, so zero is zero, one is 50, and two is 100. In this case, it will show a 16% elevator correction to the positive and a 25% to the positive on the elevator correction. So remember, the only thing in the addendum that said to be corrected was to do instead of a positive, we're gonna do a negative 50, which would have been super easy to fix with just a servo switch. But. So we're going to minus 100, and then we'll set the subsequent elevator correction, which on the DX, 18 is right here, and then we'll go to 16. Okay, speed, they say speed for two seconds. 
So what that means is that for the period of two seconds, I change from zero to 100, or minus 100 to 100 would actually be two seconds. So you'll notice that if you only sweep 50%, it doesn't take a full two seconds to deploy. That's why that doesn't always make sense. So you can set that to 10 seconds, it doesn't matter. It's totally up to you. Okay, so now that that's set, we'll hit back. Well, while we're in that menu, we'll just watch flaps. See how it changes? See how the elevator changes? Okay, so now we'll go back. What else do we need to do? Doesn't look like we need to do a whole heck of a lot less left. Um, we're gonna have to adjust channel five too at some point. Channel five is gonna be the gear switch, okay? So switch A is here, okay? I normally assign my safe to this switch. I'm gonna go ahead and set my switch D because I don't really need to get to that very often. And I don't use pincer grip, I use this grip, okay? So I have trouble getting to D. I get to this and I get to that all the time. I want this for safe, so I'm gonna save that. So watch how we do this, guys. See, my timer's already started. Throttle cut's on. I'm gonna clear that. Let's set our timer next. Timer. Did they say how long to set it to? Uh, looks like dual rates are recommended at 170. And then Expo is set to 20 and 15. And then servo travel to 100% throttle cut to minus 130, whatever. Um, okay, so we're gonna go to one out, we're gonna activate it. That means when you move this past 25%, in this case, it's gonna start the timer and it's not gonna stop until you clear it. I'm gonna go to tone and vibrate, and then I'm gonna go to the timer, and I guess they don't recommend the time, probably because they've got such a huge wide ranging uh, size uh, of batteries allowed in this. So I'm gonna just set it to five for now. Now watch this, start the time, it runs, and then it keeps running. Some people like the throttle to set the time. So the one out doesn't work for that. So like if you're running a glider, you may only give it throttle, uh, you know, 5% of the time you're flying. So you wanna use you don't want to use the one out, um, but then you may set a longer timer that is going to dictate when your VDC is going to lose power and then you'll lose control. So you want to, or go with telemetry on that and you can use telemetry to actually see that. Okay. Anyway, getting back to the point. So the next thing for us is to actually go ahead and set up our binding process. So this is the next thing. Everybody's going to ask a million questions on this. So what we got to do first is I'm going to go into my uh, system setup, I do want to disconnect my RF. I want to go down to channel assign. Currently gear, which is not gear, gear is going to be the, the door on the back. I do not want that set to A. Okay, see how it says A? I'm going to set that to D, okay? So that's done. So now I'm going to have to go in and set A to whatever channel I do for my safe designation which is done by holding this down and then designating it. So I have to go in here and designate which channel I want A to correspond to. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to system settings. Whoops, excuse me, not system settings. I'm gonna go to channel assign. So in this case, it looks like auxiliary two is not gonna be used for anything. So we'll go ahead and use auxiliary two. Uh, that's set to E right now, that's the default. So we'll set it to A. Now it's set to A. So now when I go back to monitor mode, scroll over one click, you'll see when I flip A, auxiliary two moves up and down. I don't care what channel it is, people. I've been asked this question about 10,000 times. It doesn't matter what channel. Just pick a channel that's at the top end of the range, preferably. So if you only have a seven channel receiver, you're gonna be at the top of the range, okay? Set the top channel because it's not being used. And then you can turn safe on and off with that, okay? So we'll come out of monitor mode. Throttle sticks down, throttle cuts on. Fail safe conditions are set when you bind your transmitter to the receiver. So you need to be mindful of that if you have safe on or off for your fail safe. So keep that in mind. You may wanna rebind once you've got it all figured out if you have any question about which position you have it on. Because if, if I lose radio, I want safe coming on. That'd be sweet. Um, so keep that in mind, okay? 
So let's look through the instructions. Switching on safe select binding sequence. Switching on safe select binding sequence. Switching off safe select binding sequence. So there are two different binding sequences. I'm gonna use the one that turns safe select on. It's very simple. You have a bind plug here, okay? The bind plug goes into the port on this receiver on the very inside edge here. It's gonna be kind of a bear cat to get to. Um, and it, it's gonna go like this. So you can see that the D shape is gonna go out. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to reach that very easy. We'll try. So basically you plug this in, you get it inserted, and then we're gonna get the battery ready. Okay, so it's inserted. Now we need to have our battery prepared. We can shut off our transmitter. Now on a DX18 or any of the Gen 2, you can go into a bind mode and you can have this on. I just prefer to have it off while holding this, you turn it on and that'll bind, okay? So it's off. This is not, this is dangerous. This is the most dangerous step in case something fails on here and you need to protect yourself. You can take your props off if you really wanna go through that trouble, but I'm just gonna point the nose at me so that it would have to really work hard to hit me, okay? So I'm gonna lay this battery down in here. You do not have to have the correct battery for this part. I want you to take note of the flashy lights that turn on, okay? So we are going to power this up. Flashing lights are on. Now I'm going to remove this, okay? Now I'm going to bind. In a safe spot, controlling the plane, I am going to hold down this button. You got it in picture? Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna power it on and it's gonna go into binding. Binding, EC 1500, DSMX 22 milliseconds, telemetry, and we're done. You notice the dance, watch guys. See the dance? It's a double air on dance. Got all the LEDs on, simulated strobe, very cool. Elevator goes the right way, rudder goes the right way. Ailerons go the correct way, flaps go down the correct direction, that is awesome. And gear, gear would be the back thing. Oh, that's so cool. You see it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now, what do we have to do? We have one more step for safe. First of all, we're checking our throttle cut before we advance. I am gonna control the aircraft and I'm gonna take my throttle cut. It's working. Now I'm gonna shut it off. I'm gonna give it a little bit of throttle. Oh, that's so cool. Look at those things. That moves a lot of air. Okay, throttle cut is on and tested. It has been tested and proven to work. So now at this point, let's see if we're in safe. This is why you need to test your safe because you've got to pretty much put your arm in there with it. Safe is currently on. How can I tell? Because the ailerons are attempting to right the aircraft. Normally, I would flip it upside down to show this step, but because my battery is loose, I need to slide it in to these little tie-down straps. Man, they're huge, by the way. And really nice, I might add. Super easy to use. I hate doing this in like every plane I have. I can already tell this is gonna work better. You see how easy that was? It never is that easy. Watch this, guys. This is incredible. You would think that they'd have figured this out by now, but this is like way easier than usual. Look at this. I have room to work. Okay, now my battery's not quite long enough to need the third strap, but I'm gonna try. Pull it tight, push it down. Look at that, it's never that easy. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna put the lid back on, nose in, drop it down. Now, I can flip this upside down. Watch the ailerons. The ailerons are trying to level the aircraft. It's gonna find the fastest route to level, so when you hit the middle, it goes opposite, see? That's safe working. Now watch the elevator. See the elevator, it's gonna point, it's gonna try to level the aircraft, okay? Okay, so we're good there. Currently safe is on. Come back over. How do we make an assignment of which switch we want to work? We bring the sticks in and watch, we wiggle. See, it just, it just chattered. So now look. We gotta figure out if safe is on. 
It is on. Now watch this. It is off. Okay. Now, the easiest way to see if it's on is to flip the plane upside down with the nose in your belly. And then look. Are they jumping? No. Are they jumping now? Yes. Okay. Safe is currently on. Pay attention to your switch position. This is up to you guys. That is not the way I want it. That's my neutral method. Okay. My switch. I want safe on only when I do that. Okay. So how are we going to make it work that way? We're going to go into servo setup. We're going to find the channel that's working, which is right here. We're going to go to auxiliary two, except we want to do it in reverse. And we're going to reverse it. Now, safe is going to be on. You can tell because the ailerons are moving. Okay. But I want it to be in the normal condition to have AS3X only. Okay. And safe is not on. Okay. So now that you know how that works. Okay, we're taxing this real quick. <laughs> that is so gorgeous. Get a picture of that, honey. This wing box is really strong. I don't know if that's a wing box. No, that's not a wing box. A wing box would be at the top. But whatever the lightning gear are attached to, that thing is pretty strong and easy to grab. This thing is awkward to pick up, mm -hmm. I must say. It looks like it. It looks sweet. What do you think? It does. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take this outside and we'll at least taxi it for a minute. And if the lighting is good enough, maybe I'll do something stupid, but probably not. We'll pause it a couple more. Okay. okay guys, so we're just gonna check control surfaces. This is what you need to do when you get a plane that's new. Elevator goes up, elevator goes down. Ailerons, roll the plane. Ailerons, roll the plane. Rudder, rudder, okay. Throttle doesn't do anything because I have it locked. That's good. Okay, now we make sure that, it, oh, that looks so cool when they're spinning up. I don't know if they can see that in the yeah. camera, but it is awesome. I can see it. This plane, oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so let's check flaps quick. Flaps, that's the takeoff flaps. That's the landing flaps. Jeez, that's not very far. I figured they would deploy way more than that. It looks sweet. That's a big flap, though. Yep, gotta watch out for that gutter. Very quiet. Let's see how it looks out in the dark. Man, I'm getting like massive amounts of pull. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Wow, red light's very bright. Mm -hmm. Those forward facing. Oh wow, it's got a tail light. I guess I didn't even really think about that. I always want a tail light, guys. Man, look at this trim I'm having to give it. Look at that. That's an incredible amount of trim. I'm gonna have to do a mechanical adjustment on that nose gear. Because I don't want that much trim on it when I'm trying to fly. Isn't that strobe on top white? It is a white, it, well, I mean, it's a clear LED, but it's a red. Oh, maybe that's what it just, just looks white inside. Man, I have a ton of trim on that nose gear. See, look at this. See how much more I can turn? Hmm. Okay, so... I'm not sure I'm feeling flying this in the dark for a maiden. Mm. Not on a $400 plane. No. But it sure looks awesome, doesn't it? It does. I'm trying to slow down the... The props so you get that cool effect. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to uh, set up your door so that it doesn't look hokey when it opens and closes. Throttle cuts on and tested. Let's go ahead and do that next. Walk in the garage here with me, hon. So as you can probably tell, man, that plane's pretty heavy too. We have to make some adjustments to get this thing to be positioned correctly, okay? Show them inside. Oh, there's another light inside. That is so cool. Look at that. Okay, so two things to note. I'm going to walk into the menu with you guys.
Okay, so I'm gonna go to, first of all, I'm gonna walk over here. And you can see we've got, we assign D to this, okay? So you can do whatever you want. So that's negative 100 and that's plus 100. So now there's a couple of different ways you can adjust this. If you go into the servo setup, so I'm on auxiliary, what is that? That's gear, so go to gear. Now look at the door. Now watch this, I'm gonna click on this. See how it closes? See how it opens? I'm just doing a, a fine tune adjustment here. Listen for buzzing. You don't want this thing to, to overdrive. So I think I'm gonna go We'll go to like 10, 110. And I don't want that to hit the ground either. So I'm actually gonna back that off just a hair and I'm gonna run that about 80%, okay? So then, see how it moves like that? Now watch what else I'm gonna do. Servo setup, I'm gonna go to travel and I'm gonna change it to speed and I'm gonna go to gear and I'm gonna have it open instead of normal. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna change it to like, I don't know, two seconds. Oh, that's so cool. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it open slow. Make it open slow and I'm gonna make it close pretty quick. That way if we're having a landing and we have to like quickly get it out of the way. Oh, that looks so cool. Let's show them from the side. Okay, so now the other thing we can do, see I have it set to one second up and five seconds down. I'm gonna see if I can get that to close all the way. You see how it's kind of like closed tight on one side but not on the other side? That's probably just the way it's gonna be. So I'll go to 115 up and I'll go to 80 down. That is so cool. So, flaps all the way down. Dump off the paratroopers. Guys, this is gonna be so much fun. I can't wait to fly it. Let's go do a mechanical adjustment on the nose gear. Let's get that done before it's dark or before we're trying to, trying to fly it. So how do we do a mechanical adjustment on the nose gear, guys? The way we do it is first of all, we look at our trim. You see that trim that's way over to the side. That's not good. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I have enough. I still need more to get it to go straight, okay? I mean, you can get it to go straight, but obviously we just, we need to reserve some of that for when we're trying to fly. Okay, so we'll bring it right to us. Throttle cut is on and tested. I may have to do a pull tab on here too, so I don't have to put my hands in this vulnerable mm -hmm. spot. And then this canopy, I bet you can put it backward. Nope, it doesn't, doesn't stick to the magnets that way, which is a bummer. Do so you guys see this? There's your there's your mechanism for your steerable nose gear. So all we have to do is just adjust this linkage. So the easiest way to do it, sorry about that camera crew. The easiest way to adjust this linkage is probably we're far enough off that I can actually undo this screw and physically move that linkage. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll grab a screwdriver and come right back. Okay, so we got one of these cheapo screwdrivers that, um, okay, so remember the planes want to go there, right? Let's test it. Yeah, it's wanting to go that way really bad. So I need to bring it back this way. Throttle cuts on and tested. So I need to basically unscrew this. So from neutral now, So that's centered. I need to undo that screw. 
I'm going to hold it in my mouth and I'm going to pick it up one pick. I'm going to move it back just a little bit. I'm going to stick it back on there. I'm not even going to put this little teeny tiny screw back in yet. I'm just going to hold that. I'm going to actually just put it on the ground right there. And I'm going to leave the canopy off so that it's super easy. Watch your feet, camera crew. Oh, yeah. It's like so much better already. Okay, throttle cuts off. So giving it... Oh, that's so much better. See, that's almost tolerable. Okay, so coming straight at us. Just need... Now we just gotta figure out which way we gotta go for the fine tune. Okay, so it's favoring slightly to the left, correct? Mm-hmm. Or is it? Gosh, it's hard to tell in the dark. Here, let's come straight at us. So which way is it gonna go? So it's favoring to the right, just a hair. Going to the right, just a hair. So I barely need anything. Okay, throttle cuts on. So if it's going to the right, but just a hair, then I need to turn it back to the left just a little teeny tiny bit. Which means I'm not gonna be able to take a full step on this servo. It's gonna be too much adjustment. So what we have to do for that is we actually have to spin this out a little bit, okay? So that's a little bit more work then. So my thought is, the easiest way might be to pull this off. And actually, I kind of want to have more. I want to be able to turn this thing sharper, too. So I might actually go ahead and just. If it's going to the right, I need to pull it back to the left. So I'm going to tighten this in a couple of turns. So there's one turn. Two turns, we'll do three. There's three turns. And then I just need to put that back where I had it. Is that about right, camera crew? You think so? Okay, we're gonna test again. Laying the screwdriver down next to the screw. Oh yeah, I got the wrong hole. Hate it when that happens. <laughs> okay, so that's pulling way to the left. So I must have not lined this up right. So I'm going to pick it up and I'm just going to twist it just ever so slightly to the next tooth position. The next tooth position on the servo. We'll just roll it away from us. Favoring to the right, wouldn't you say? Just a hair. Yeah. yeah just a little bit more little bit straightened. More. It's really close. Okay. So we just need to go to the right just a little bit, right? So it's need... going to the right. Okay, I need to pull it a little bit more to the left. I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, so to the left means I need to tighten this up even more one two okay now we'll push this back oh yeah look at that guys see and then at that point you can you can get your centering with trim because you're only going to talk about a couple clicks and then i want you to be aware of something else too guys look at this this thing is also way out of alignment mm-hmm So I need to go just to the left, just a hair more. I can see pretty good now. So that needs to be square. Pop this off. I'm gonna tighten this just a, a, another, I'd like to do half a turn, but I, I can't do half a turn or I'll be upside down. So do one more turn. Okay, make sure it's almost square. 
push it back away from us. Okay. Now we're going left, right? Wouldn't you say? <clears throat> mm, barely. Yeah, I would say barely is the correct assessment. I think we were better before, so I put it back. Okay. All right, so that's how you do your mechanical adjustment on the nose gear. That's kind of a pain in the butt, I know, but believe me, it'll pay dividends when you're trying to take off. Yeah, we're going to the right now, so. Okay, so throttle cuts on and tested. Now I want you guys to look at something else. This, this position is not centered even close. Come look at it from this angle. You can tell the from here too. The rudder is like not even close. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. That's neutral, okay? So that means it's gonna favor like really bad. So what I have to do on that is the same exact scenario, except I have to try to probably pop this off. Normally I would want to have a little bit of rudder input like that to help counter some of the torque, but this has got counter rotating props, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. Gee, that screwdriver. Yeah, I'm gonna get the screwdriver. You can, you have to put this screw back in too. So we'll pause it and do that. Okay, folks, so in order to adjust this, I really don't want to have to break this screw free from the nut. There's a nut on the bottom that retains it. I want to keep it the way it is. I'm going to see if I can pop this off. If I can't pop it off on the ball joint, then I'm going to try another thing first before I open everything up. Sometimes these ball joints, they'll let you pop them off, but you got to just be really careful. Okay, so you see how I pop that off? I just kind of use my screwdriver to pry it up, but just note that that paint scraped where I did that. So be aware that you might scrape the paint, but look how much of an adjustment I got to make. Jeez, that's huge. So I'm just going to spin this one, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, still need more. Six, seven, geez, seven. What is this hobby king? Eight. <laughs> Nine, nine's pretty darn close. I'm gonna see what what this next one will be. Oh yeah, look how much better that is, guys. Look at this. Ow, that hurts. Look at this, look at the gap right here. It's perfect. You see that? It's square. That's what you want on a plane by default. On, on real planes, there's trim tabs. On these things, we have trim adjustments. But keep in mind, the AS3X and the Safe both depend on having neutral controls when you start. So the only other thing that concerns me on this plane is that these ailerons, they don't look like they're square to the wing surface. And that does make me a little bit nervous. The other thing is the flaps are actually protruding up a little bit. You see that camera crew? Mm -hmm. So if that concerns you, that's not as critical because it's not asymmetrical. So what you can do is you can actually go into your settings. Um, you can go into your servo settings and you can actually adjust flaps. Whoops, you don't wanna adjust both of them. You can do it there or you can do it in your flap system. So you see your neutral position here? See what's going on guys? See how I just adjusted that until it lines up? So then I did like negative eight, that would make it flush. I don't actually want it to be like that necessarily, but you see this, look, you can make spoilers out of them too. That will impact your flight performance a lot. So I would recommend maybe not doing that. The other thing is, even though these are huge flaps, I'm actually gonna set this to minus 10 just to make them flat. Nah, I want to have more deflection. I'll go to zero. Now watch what I'm going to do here, guys. I'm going to go to servo setup. I'm going to go to flaps. And I'm going to open up only the downward sweep. So you see this how it's on negative 100 or 100? You got to highlight it. See what's happening? Look, they're dropping down. That's 150%, so they're overdriven. But only on the down sweep. Okay, 
So those things are gonna really make a big, big then under flap system. I just increased this output by approximately, um, we went from 100 to 150%. So that'd be like another 50% here. So you could actually increase your elevator correction a little bit if you wanted to. I'm actually just by default, I'm just gonna kick it up like that. And then we're gonna go do expo real quick, but we'll do that inside. You wanna pause it? Okay guys, the last thing is Expo. Dual rates and Expo. I do not use dual rates, generally speaking, but I do use Expo, okay? I always assign things to this switch. It's just the way I do it. There's nothing magical about it. I like one switch for all three axis. If you would prefer to have three switches or whatever, go for it. This is what I do by default, okay? Ailerons, I make an assignment to switch F. For zero, I set it to like Generally for when I'm doing a maiden, I'll set it to something like 10, then I'll set it to 20, and then I'll set it to 30, okay? And I'll back off the dual rates to like 90, okay? So what that does for me is that gives me the ability to fly in my neutral setting, and then I can decrease it or increase it so I can get the plane to the ground safely and then make an adjustment accordingly, okay? My middle setting is always the setting I fly with. Okay, I always change it after the maiden. Then I go to elevator, make my switch assignment, and I do the same thing. And you're like, well, but what if you don't want expo on elevator? Well, then I'll make an adjustment after my maiden flight, guys. That's literally as simple as that. Um, yes, I will potentially make different adjustments for all three axis, but let's be real. The reason that I use expo, oops, I forgot to make my switch assignment. So now I have to redo that. So zero, this will be 20, and then this will be 30, and then this will drop down to 90, meaning that there'll be slightly less output as well. Look at the chart if you're trying to understand this. That will help you understand what's going on. Your stick position is relative to the square here, and that's how you can read that chart. So I'm going to back out. Now that's set, ready to rock and roll. Everything is ready to go, including, including that awesome. That is going to be so cool guys. I can't wait to show you it flying. I do hear some buzzing and I just want you guys to see this. This this does not make me real thrilled. I'm not sure what to think on that, if that's going to be an issue or not, but there's a pretty good deviation here. So we'll have to wait and see. Looks like it's probably just a trimming issue on the ailerons, um, but nothing that can't be adjusted out. And then later we can do a mechanical adjustment on these ball joints, just like we did on the other control surfaces. In fact, I might just level those up and call it done for tonight. Thanks for watching guys. The maiden flight is coming right now.